The plain is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I loves me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? I'm your girl, the plainest Jane. And let's see what's happening in these virtual streets. You ready? All right now. <laughs> this will be a crazy ride. I'm warning you now. What up and welcome back. It's your girl, Jane, the plainest Jane. And listen, y'all already know how I get down over here. I serve y'all serve in the form of black news and celebrity entertainment because look, y'all know things are always sticky in Hollywood and in real life. So we got some syrup that we need to get into. My co-host is sitting up here staring at me like he deserves something. And I gave him two treats in the last video and he didn't even do what he needed to do. So he, he going to wait on that because he like running off on the plug twice. Come on in, hit thumbs up. Shout out to the people who joined the membership right before the live started. There were um, two of you and I do appreciate you all so much. But also shout out to all of my other channel members. Kiki Jackson, thank you so much. And also um, CGN, thank you so much for joining the channel. Joining or rejoining the channel as well. Now, look, we need to talk. We need to talk stickies, and I'm going to open the phone lines later on if anybody has something to say. Now, I need the phone calls to stay relatively short, right? Um, but that's when we open the phone lines once I get through pretty much everything that I need to discuss. Now, I might have an unpopular opinion, and y'all know how I feel. Some of you all who have been a part of this channel for a while, you've been listening to what I've been saying in my commentary. Some of you all know some of my experiences and even the, the, the hurtful experiences and what I've been through, right? Um, so this might be an unpopular opinion, but Chris Brown was low key, right? Now, did he respond correctly? Did he begin to deflect? Yes. But he was low key, right? About some things. And I'm gonna get into that. Y'all might not agree, but that's okay. That's what the phone lines opening up are for. Some of y'all are making excuses for little Duval and I'm side eyeing some of y'all. I'm wondering if your children and your nieces and any other children that you've come in contact with, I'm wondering if they are safe, if you're making excuses for the mess that Little Duval has done. Now, mind you, I talked about Little Duval and his mess and those problematic tweets. I talked about them on Valentine's Day, which was Tuesday of last week. And what do you know? Two days later, it comes to mainstream media. Little Duval and these tweets. I'm like, I've been putting on this two almost three days ago. <laughs> uh -huh. Your girl always got her ear to the streets, okay? So give me my credit. Give me my props. I called it nasty before anybody else got a chance to. Despite the fact that some people are trying to make excuses for him. Tyler Perry does the unthinkable. We need to discuss what's going on with Tyler Perry. Y'all know I got things that I always have to say about Tyler Perry. The Bernie Mac show curse. We're going to get into that. Rihanna, right? There's so much surrounding Rihanna. My makeup just came in the mail today. I do have on a Rihanna lip gloss. Okay, today I haven't been able to get into any of Rihanna's shade products yet, any powders, any liquids, because I like to be able to match my stuff in person. But listen, there's a lot that we need to get into. Happy Saturday. I'm sorry I couldn't come on yesterday and give you all this, although I had most of my show, all of the show was completely put together yesterday. I was just too tired and burnt out from the work week, to be completely honest with you. But I'm here today and I'm giving y'all some things to do to get through your Saturday, to get through your weekend. And if there are ever any stories or topics that you want me to cover, my DMs are always open. My email is always open and you can always tag me on things on social media between both Instagram and Twitter. Okay. So Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start by getting into my bag because, baby, I got some things I need to say to some of y'all. Under my video, defending pedophilia. Mm. Now, y'all know we just got finished doing the goddamn R. Kelly video, right? So, on today's episode of What the Hell is Wrong with Y'all? The excuses that some of y'all are making for Lil Duval, it perplexes me. And I'm going to go ahead and let you know that I'm not surprised at some of you nasty niggas. 
are sitting over here making excuses about Lil Duval and the things he said, not only about children, but his own goddamn child. I mean, and, and the, the mental gymnastics, the way that these niggas were bending over backwards to make excuses for these things, it makes me side-eye you. And I think that all of you, you and Lil Duval, belong on the registry. Let me go back and let me read one of these tweets just so you all know exactly what I'm talking about here. Let me go ahead and make it bigger on the screen since some of y'all act like y'all y'all too cool for school, but baby, that's not a flex. Y'all was one of them children that wasn't left behind and they just passed y'all for the sake of statistics. They didn't make sure that they, they didn't ensure that you learned anything. Some of y'all are dense. Lil Duval said, hashtag Justin Bieber possessed fan. Hey, Justin, can you please grape me and my daughter then hit me with a bat if I get out of line. Whenever my daughter period starts, that's when I'm going to be the first dude to dog her out. And maybe that wasn't it. Okay. I talked about it when I did my rundown on Tuesday earlier of this week. I even clipped the video. Matter of fact, I didn't clip the video. My editor, shout out to you, clipped the video and we uploaded it separately. Okay. So it was no secret what he said. And there was a series about, I want to say, five or six tweets that read like this. Can you please, our word, my daughter, baby? And you making excuses? So before I get into the technicality of actually pulling up the comment, because it's still there. And if it's not, I have the screenshot. Because a, a, a lot of you niggas would act like, wasn't nobody saying it. no there there was and the comments still exist in my comment section to this very moment so if you didn't check out that standalone video where i clipped the eight minutes of me talking about it check out the single upload that i did earlier this week or you could check out the entire valentine's day upload it was a really good show by the way there's some shows i'm not proud of but the valentine's day show is one that i'm really proud of so check it out but here's what i got to say Cause I got to drag some of you niggas and y'all lazy ass excuses for niggas that think that it's comedy to talk about the sexual abuse of children, let alone your own child. It's not good for, for you to even talk about it for, for it to be anybody else's child, but your own. Hmm. Wonder how little Duval's baby mama is feeling about, you know, uh, what happens when he picks up his child and what's really going on over there? That's what I wonder. Shout out to Bougie Barbie for sending the $2 super, uh, super chat. I appreciate that. It says, thanks for sharing your evening with us, Jane. You are more than welcome. You all deserve it. You know, I love sharing my thoughts and putting together thoughts that make a little bit of sense and, you know, sharing something. Um, you know, my unique perspective. I always feel like my perspective is a little unique. Leo, stop. So what I saw on Twitter was, because I, I got people defending him on both Twitter when I spoke out on Twitter and both on YouTube when I uploaded my standalone video about it, the clip of it. And the person says, okay, well, why all the outrage now? Y'all are weird. They, they, they wanted to call the people who dug the tweets up, right? And reacted to the tweets. No, what's even weirder is y'all digging it up. Why all the outrage now? Where was all the outrage 13 years ago when he tweeted this shit? Let me say this. Pedophilic thoughts and tendencies do not expire, especially without proof of rehabilitation and at the very least remorse. Not that 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 absolves you. Right. Or nor does it mean that we can eliminate you from the, sus uh, the suspicion that you're going to do that again. Where was all that to answer the question about where where was all the outrage 13 years ago? First of all, the internet was a totally different place 13 years ago. 
Should we have been outraged then? Yes. Does that mean we shouldn't call it out now? No. Was Lil Duval, what, did, did we even have blogs to make Lil Duval a thing? If it wasn't for the blogs and the breakfast club, we still wouldn't even know who the fuck or what the fuck Lil Duval was. But because the neighborhood talk and the breakfast club and all of these other things that have literally been introduced to us within the last decade, that's the only reason we know his name, really, because he's always saying something problematic. And the funny thing about it is these people are willing to cap because these were people saying, I'm going to go ahead and go with these tweets are fake. I'm like. Here's a screenshot. I, like I went and I dug for each and every one of those tweets myself. And they were there at that time. And if you go to my Twitter and scroll about eight tweets down my timeline, you can see where I retweeted where, because again, Tuesday, I talked about it. It wasn't until Thursday when mainstream media blew it up. And then he went back and deleted those tweets. So I retweeted one of those problematic tweets. And I said, you're a weirdo and you've never been funny. And I retweeted that. And the tweet was still available. But people that don't even want to do research are going to say, these, these tweets are fake. No, you're making excuses for your pedophilic fave. I can understand making excuses for your fave and it ain't got nothing to do with pedophilia. I can get that. I can get that. But I can't get with you calling them fake when when other instead of putting in the work, you're making excuses for pedophilia. That's disgusting. Without doing an ounce of research, not to mention, like I said, we cannot forgive or trust pedophilic behavior without remorse or proof of rehabilitation. And even with remorse, you know, some people fake remorse, but at the very least, you know, for the sake of court of public opinion, hell, for even the sake of being in a courtroom. You know, remorse is required if you want us to shut the fuck up and get over it. Or if you want to be looked at like you you have redeemed yourself. We don't even get that. It's just, man, be quiet. He was just... Then I had somebody tell me on YouTube, he was probably just developing his set. I said, jokes about having your own daughter great is not comedy. They said, oh, you're so arrogant. You think you can define what comedy is. Excuse me. He's a comedian. You can I, I never said he wasn't a comedian. That's his technical classification. But when I say great of your own child is not comedy, I said what I said. Is comedy subjective? Yes. But if you don't have a moral compass, I can understand you arguing me down about that. You freakazoid. Then I had this same person tell me, well, you know, 10 to 13 years ago, Twitter was the wild, wild west. Context matters. Anything went on the internet 10 to 13 years ago, and that's the context that, 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 that's the context that matters. The majority, the majority of us know that Twitter was the wild, wild west 10 to 13 years ago. Baby, I was there. I started my Twitter in 2009, 2009. Okay, go and look. That's not context. Are you stupid? Are you dense? Were you one of them children that weren't left behind? See, because context would be Right, because then, then they wanted to argue me down about the definition of context, right? We're talking about a virtually lawless land where you could say and do anything. That's not context. You can live in the middle of the forest where there are little to no cops and commit a crime. That's not context to the crimes that you're committing. The context would be what types of conversations were he having before, was he having before and after those tweets took place? Because taking something out of context means that you're missing the bigger picture in the conversation that was being held at that time. I mean, like, for you to say Twitter was a wild, wild west and that's the context that matters and y'all are taking shit out of context, it's lazy, it's lackluster, it's vapid. Real context about a comedian a decade or 13 years ago would be, well, what did comedians have to do at that time to get on? Were all comedians engaging in 
humor as dark as asking somebody to grape their child was that normalized behavior at that time. Let's hold his comments up to other comedians and what they were doing in order to break in to the industry. Nigga, that's context. Then they tried to bring up the definition of historical context. Again, talking about events, conversations, the lay of the land at that time. To just say anything goes, anything went at that time is not context. And it doesn't even scratch the surface. Stop playing with me about excusing people who have pedophilic thoughts. And a lot of times it comes off with these fucked up tweets. And these sentiments that we just call humor. Everything a comedian says out their mouth is not a joke. It's not funny. And so for you to act like every fucked up thing Duval has said, well, he's a comedian. It wasn't a joke. It's nasty. It's disgusting. Make it make sense quickly, but you can't. You know, and I really say that we need to stop arguing with niggas like this and really just open our eyes to who they are and keep our children and our family away from niggas like this. Let them tell on themselves because if they making excuses for Duval and then you know a nigga that they've never met, a parasocial relationship, you know damn why they making excuses for their homeboys and shit like that too. Not to mention, they might even think that jokes about their own children are funny like that. Joke. Let them fucking talk and keep your fucking kids away from them. He's a comedian. He was working on his set. His set? Jokes about any child, let alone his own? You know, the majority of people who are sexually assaulted, it came from somebody who was related to them. And you think that, that a joke like that is funny? If your daughter went to school and they teacher joked about it, and, and the dynamic and the relationship between the teacher and the student is nowhere near as close to the relationship between the parent and the child. So if you think that your kid can go to school and the teacher can joke about graping the child, then oh, is it funny? Is it funny then? But then again, you're so sick and twisted in the mind, you do think it's funny. You do. Again, when we talk about context, don't get me wrong. Comedy used to be a lot darker back in the day. But when we talk about like the Richard Pryors, back in the day, they weren't joking about other people in that sense, they were joking about their own fucked up situations. They were a lot more edgy, but they never said, somebody come break me and my daughter. Like, that's not that's that's not where the bar even was. For Lil Duval to stoop lower than Richard Pryor, to still be an evil, malicious midget, to still be as unfunny and irrelevant as he is, and for you to talk about context matters and you clearly don't even understand what the context is, it behooves me. Red Fox, they never joked about their children being essayed, being graped. So don't play with me sitting up here. And then, and then this is this is how you know they like to they want to play both sides of the fence. This person, this person came under my video and made this comment and said, you know, context matters. I'm not excusing what he did, but you know, you know, the context is blah blah blah. And so as I dug deeper, and I'm I'm not digging into you saying I'm not excusing what he's doing, because you clearly didn't mean that. Because every comment after that, you were excusing what he was doing. You said context. You don't even know the definition of context. Then you brought up historical context. You don't know what the fuck that is. Then you bring up, well, that was just, you know, his brand of comedy. You also think that rape is comedy. Rape of your own child is comedy. You name me another comedian that's then got on stage 
or even was I can't even see T.I. doing that shit. And he's a wannabe comedian. Now, while T.I. got all of his problems in the world, trust me, I know, 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 I know. But for me to say, I don't even think T.I. would do that. I think that that says a lot. Pharrell Williams, mighty dreams. That that says a lot. I do. I do. So, you know, I, I just, I can't get, I, I, just, I just can't get with that. I can't get with that. Um, wanting to debate me in my own comments when, you know, your comprehension is, is lower than your moral compass, baby. It's in hell. It's in hell. It's in hell with regards to this situation. It's, it's, it's sickening. And we really need to start listening to these problematic niggas instead of arguing with them. Because you're never going to be able, if, if, if they're going to excuse it, there's nothing that you're going to be able to say that's really going to change their mind. Take heed and take note of who they are. And assure that your family and your loved ones and the children that you care about aren't surrounded by them. That's what I can say. Let me find out they deleted their comment. Are you watching the video and you went and deleted your comment? Because it was here earlier today, baby. Oh, you know what? It wasn't this video. It was the video I uploaded that stood alone. Get into it. The following video is broadcasting live. And thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. Okay, so here we are in the right comment section. Okay, here we go. Y'all see it? They said, just to add some context, Twitter was like the Wild Wild West 10 to 12 years ago. Everyone was trying to be edgy or dark. I'm not justifying it. But um, by the way, context matters. Okay, we go back and forth. They say, by definition, time is context. What are you talking about? These aren't tweets from last week or last year. And to further provide context, he's a comedian. He was probably working on his material slash act on Twitter. Your definition of context is flawed and vapid. Here's what I graciously pulled from the internet for you. And I went ahead and I defined context because context is a lot deeper than time. To say that this took place in the 80s or 10 years ago or a decade ago, it does not provide context. What are the events surrounding? What happened before and after? Those and, 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 and so much more. There's so much more nuance that goes into the definition. What was the climate of comedy at that time? What were other comedians big starting off trying to break into the industry what were their actions like at that time you only found let me tell you somebody who's not a comedian who was also doing shit like that Charlemagne the god not a comedian but he was nastiest with the, with the things that he had to say about teenagers and everything else so it wasn't even necessarily about comedic he wasn't providing any context he was taking up for his fave. And here he is. I said, grape is not comedy. Here you go. Oh, so you get to decide what is and isn't comedy? Comedy is subjective. We can argue all day whether you find him funny or not. He's a comedian by profession. Enough with the hypersensitivity. Hyper awareness, as I stated, hyper awareness is not the same as hypersensitivity and accountability doesn't equate that either. Jokes about having your own daughter great is not comedy. He's not funny. And of course, my thought about him not being funny in general is not subjective. But asking a man to grape your child is not comedy. Argue with your mama about that. And here you go. The arrogance of you thinking that you can decide what is or isn't comedy. The misogyny of you to think that grape of your own child or anyone else's is comedy. I determined a while ago that you don't have a moral compass, but good job on moving the goalposts. You incorrectly threw out historical context without providing any, and now your gripe is now what I do and do not think comedy is versus how disgusting these tweets are. You and Lil Duval both belong on the sex offender registry. And I would tell you to be for fucking real right now, but I know you can't. Get that man's nuts out your mouth. Dick eating is not cute. And I mean, we could we could go on and on because he can he, you know, he kept going back and forth and back and forth. And I'm like, you're not keeping up. Your comprehension is low. 
They even began deleting comments because here they go trying to give me basic definitions. Bitch, my vocabulary, my syntax, and my diction, right, are all intact. It's you and your lackluster thinking that's the problem here. Baby, giving me definitions ain't going to do shit. You're giving me definitions that you need to study yourself because you're incorrectly utilizing these terms. But nonetheless, I just wanted to get some of you creeps together. And if you're in here right now and you like making excuses for things like this, that's on you. Okay? That's on you. But I said what I said and some of y'all are nasty as hell. Period. All right? All right. So, 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 um, um, as we keep it pushing, look, if you haven't realized already, and baby, we, 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 we sped off, baby, baby, I spun the block, I hit the corner, do y'all have y'all seatbelts on on this bus? Do you have your seatbelts on on this bus, I ask? Because, baby, we got started. We sped off. If you don't already know, you are aboard my bus. And this is the Black News Bus. And if you don't know what the Black News Bus is, it is a social media stroll that covers topics inside of the Black celebrity world. But it also covers real Black news involving everyday people like you and me. And you know I've always got some nuggets of Black excellence and history while we on the bus. So we're going to keep this bus going. And hopefully all of you all have hit thumbs up already. Um, because that is how you need to pay your fare real quick. I hope you're feeling all right. I hope your mental health is okay. I hope you tackled your own invisible issues. Shout out to all of our new subscribers. And of course, before I get into breaking down today's topics and viral events, make sure you subscribe and thumbs up or down. Honestly, either way, I do appreciate it. But don't forget to think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. So let's keep it pushing. Before we get into Chris Brown, which we're about to get into, um, we need to talk about Tyler Perry and how he did the unthinkable, baby. I'm telling you the unthinkable, the unthinkable. So here we have an image of Tyler Perry, AKA Medea. And what Tyler Perry is doing is he is donating $750,000 to pay senior citizens property taxes that live near his Atlanta film studio. Now, this donation will ensure that residents will not have to move away from their homes due to gentrification. But also, you all know that um, Tyler Perry's studio is so large, right? It costs so much money. It drove the property that property taxes up in that area. So the senior citizens and really everybody else in the surrounding like zip codes, areas and districts where um, Tyler is located in Georgia, um, their, um, their property taxes have went up. And senior citizens, a lot of them, you know, our grandparents, great grandparents, if we're still blessed enough to have them. And hell, some of your parents might even be senior citizens. Is my mother a senior citizen? I would say, yeah, but I wouldn't tell it to her face. Uh, you know, they, they live on a fixed income. OK, they live on a fixed income. Now, my mother just so happens to be a senior citizen that isn't living on a fixed income because she's still working. But this was something really good that Tyler did. And y'all know I'm always holding Tyler to task because I feel like his representation of black women on screen on film is it, 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 it misses the mark more than it hits the mark. OK, but don't get me started because I will go off on a Tyler Perry tangent. And what I do not appreciate about his films, although I have found things to actually appreciate, but this is a very good thing that he's done. A very good thing. I do think that it is a shame that he had to step up and do this. The government is not doing enough to ensure that the seniors are, are taken care of. Um, what's going on with the lottery money? What's going on with, you know, like got gambling taxes, right? You've got tobacco tax. You've got marijuana taxes. Well, I don't think Georgia, I don't think Georgia has legalized marijuana, you know, cannabis taxes, but there are so many different ways that they can tap into making sure that senior citizens don't have to struggle the way that they do, right? Um, and so I really think that the government should be doing more about this, but I don't live in Atlanta, but it does really suck. A lot of times, I think that the lottery goes, at least here in Maryland, and let me know what it's like wherever you 
wherever you live. But here in Maryland, the Maryland lottery, there's supposed to be a percentage of that that goes back into the school system. So it's supposed to like give back to the kids in some way. You got people gambling and gambling their house, their money, they like savings away. And there's a portion of it that is supposed to go back into schools. And I do think that number one, there's not enough checks and balances to make sure that they're really given to the schools. A lot of our schools are still struggling here in Maryland, but I do think that there can be taxes applied to other things, alcohol tax, tobacco tax, cannabis tax. Every city got some, you know, some casinos or different things like that. Y'all, hell, I mean, the fines from the red light cameras, the regular tickets that the cops give everyday people that they pull over. There's so many different ways that they're collecting tax and money and fines and things from people. And there's so many, uh, you know, just things that people need, Medicare, food stamps, all that other stuff. But senior citizens really need to be taken care of. And there's got to be a bucket that they can pull from another one or two percent of taxes that they can create. Right. Everybody like to smoke. There's got to be somewhere that they can pull some of these things to help the elderly and otherwise out. Right. And mind you, there's a lot of other people who are needy outside of the elderly. But come on, we, 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 we get to people who have lived to be 60 and 70 years old. Give them a break. You know, at the very least, their property taxes. You know, you have some people. Uh, it, it, homes are subject to foreclosure. They're losing their homes and everything else. Homes that they've been in for years. You know, it sucks that some of them lose it due to foreclosure and, and property taxes and everything else. Okay. So um, that's that, right? That's that. And so um, I wanted to touch on that because, you know, Positive Black news is never talked about nearly as much. I always have to mix positive Black news and Black history into the mess to make sure that I can, I'm kind of like force feeding it to my viewers. It, it, you know, I did a video on Uncle Tom not too long ago. We gonna, I, I did some more digging. We're going to get into Uncle Tom a little bit later. You know, people say, I want to see more of the positive stuff, but nobody clicks on that positive stuff. The, nobody clicks on it, right? So I got to force feed it and go mess, positive, mess, positive, mess, history, mess, black history. And that sucks. But hey, I've learned how to do it. And that's what we doing. Okay. So, you know, things are always sticky in Hollywood and real life. We're going to go ahead and get into this next story. But of course, don't forget to check in on your mental health in the meantime and in between time. Let's get into Kylie and Chris Brown. I know that that's what a lot of y'all are waiting for. I feel like I'm getting sick. I hope not, but I feel like I am. Okay. Um, look, if you're looking for ways to support the show, consider hitting the like button or the thumbs up button. Okay. Or you can send a cash app to dollar sign the plane of Shane. It is right here on the screen. Sharing the video helps as well. Facebook, Twitter, text message, um, group chats, however it is that you share videos. But however you support the video, whether you send five, 10 or hell, even two dollars to the cash app, if it's just the free way, thumbs up, subscribe, share, just know any and all that is appreciated as well. Are y'all having a good time on the bus so far? Because we're going to get into it. This is our second live of the night. We, we did the R. Kelly update. I had a, a series of, of different R. Kelly updates I needed to give y'all. We did that about 40 minutes ago. And here we are on our second bus ride. Transfer y'all to the next bus. I hope y'all are having a good time. Make sure y'all drop some sexy pancakes in the chat if you are. Uncle Stu sends a $5 super chat. It says, I got your email. Thank you. I just need a good time. Awesome. I will get back to that. Um, I will respond to that email, hopefully this evening, if I can remember. Okay. Now let's talk about Kylie and Chris Brown, baby. This thing was messy. Hey, Tamika's Den, shout out to you. I saw the live you did earlier today when you were talking about all the different black inventors and things like that. Very crucial and very necessary. I'm going to share that on my members only community tab when we end this live here. Um, Kylie and Chris Brown, baby. I have some thoughts. I'm going to keep it real, right? I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it real. Okay. So let me see. Kylie decided that she wanted to come out and Chloe Bailey and Chris Brown are collabing on some, some upcoming music. Okay. 
we a hundred down in the likes. Like, what's going on? 140 likes and 247 people here. Y'all gonna make me go get Tyra Banks. Don't make me go. Come, yeah. Really, y'all? Really? But you're not Stop it! I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this. When my mother yells at this, it's because she loves me. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? You go to bed at night, you lay there, you take responsibility for yourself. Y'all take responsibility for not hitting thumbs up when I end this live. Let's get into the meat and gravy, right? <clears throat> Let's get into the meat and gravy of this situation. I love me some Chloe Bailey. When I tell you my favorite artist right now for the last, uh, probably going on a year, Chloe Bailey. Chloe Bailey is my girl, all right? <clears throat> And she's coming out with her debut album and she's got a series of singles that she's releasing. And Chris Brown is collaborating with her. As you can see, if I make it bigger right here on the screen, Chris Brown is collaborating with her in a song. And baby, when I tell you social media lost it, it's exactly what I mean. They lost it. They lost their mind. Why are you, you know, partnering with an abuser and so on and so forth. Social media was in a tizzy, right? Now, mind you, we just got finished talking about Chris Brown after Rihanna's Super Bowl performance because uh, he decided he wanted to um, say something about her on, on the Instagram stories. So here's what the, um, if you all remember the group 3LW, I'm getting a little tired of your broken promises, promises. Girl, stop it. Stop it, girl. Um, 3LW's only flop, you know, the former girl group. Right, Adrian Ballon, Natri Naughton, two very successful women who are still working in the industry. Kylie Williams is the only person who literally ain't made shit of herself since then. Always got something to say. And put a one in the chat if you watch the encore on BET that had the girlies from all the different groups. Um, 702, Cherish, 3LW. Was this somebody from In Vogue there? Hell, they even had the damn girl Aubrey from Danity Kane, baby. Um, so yeah, put a one in the chat if you watched it. It helps you to further learn more about Kylie and who she is, or rather who she isn't, um, because she comes off as very jealous. Notri Naughton came out and said that Kylie Williams had literally thrown some chicken at her in the limo because Kylie, Kylie's mother was the manager of the group. And to be completely frank with you, see, look, I grew up at that time. Players, they gonna play. Uh, and haters, they... Like, I grew up in that time. I'm talking like middle school, high school, when 3LW was hot. So I remember them. The least talented person of the group was Kylie, right? All the other girls could dance better. They could hold a note better. And Kylie had these like jealous fits that happened quite frequently. And Notri has came out and said, Notri Naughton, um, who plays in 50 Cent's, what's the show? Power. And came out and said that there was some colorism going on. I was the only dark skinned girl. They would treat me some type of way. I would get treated some type of way because the manager of the group was Kylie's mother. And Notri Naughton was 15 at that time. And they were on tour with Destiny's Child and all that other stuff, right? So that's just to give you some backstory on Kylie and 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 who she is, right? And and Nivea, yes, Nivea was on Encore too. Um, I thought the song that they came up with at the very end, I think the song was good. I do. It was a struggle to get there, but her name is Natri. What do I keep saying? Her irrelevant name is Kylie. Child, y'all know my my enunciation might be all. They said it's Keely. Child. Child, Kylie, Keely. I mean, but the I comes afterwards in her name. So why would I say Keely when it's K-I-E? That's Kai, that Kai, right? Wouldn't you get Kylie from that? Child, bye. I, don't know. I, I appreciate y'all correcting me, but I'm just looking at the way her name is spelled. Like, why would they spell it? Child. Anyway, so here she is responding to, as if she's relevant enough in the music industry to really... So... Chloe Bailey 
she posted the collaboration when we can expect to see the collaboration, which just so happens to be 224 the day after R. Kelly is sentenced, by the way. <clears throat> and so here goes Kylie Williams or Keely, should I say. <laughs> Tomatoes, tomatoes. <laughs> um, she says, let uh what she's saying is let Chris Brown come out with his own record. So genius, so captivating that it makes us all forget that he beats women. He can't, so he won't. So what does he do? He slowly creeps back into the mainstream by getting small nods for features on Black women's merit. Black women who are more successful and, you know, have more relevancy is essentially what she's saying. It was only a couple more words. But the fact of the matter is, I don't know where she's been. For her to even feel like, now don't get me wrong, everybody can have their own opinion, right? But for her to act like Chris Brown ain't been coming out with music, singles, albums, videos, he has. So what this implies is he ain't coming out with his own music, so he's using Black when he is coming out with his own music. And some of his music is actually charting. Am I a fan of Chris Brown? Let me go ahead and say, honestly, I'm not. I was before that whole Rihanna scandal when I was in high school listening to Chris Brown's album. I think it was the album titled Exclusive. It had that track titled Lottery on there and all those other amazing songs. Yes, on my MP3 player. And then I got upgraded to the iPod. They had the fat iPods. They had the square iPods. All other Baby, I mean, Chris Brown was that thing, okay? But once the thing happened with Rihanna, I pulled back. I did. But I didn't expect everybody else to pull back as well, especially because we're talking about something that happened a while ago. Does that excuse it? No. No. Right? Now, Rihanna did an interview with Oprah. She did an interview with Oprah saying that she forgave Chris. And for some reason, now Chloe wanting to partner with him for music, that's her choice. That's her choice. Should we bash her or create all of this negative press for Chloe's new single? Honestly, you, let me choose my words correctly. You know what? What I'll do is I'm going to keep going through these screenshots so that we can add some more nuance and textures to the conversation. Right. Here's what Chris Brown said in reference to that, because clearly Kylie Keely, mm, she ain't been outside long enough to understand that Chris Brown has been doing his thing. Now, do I listen? No, it's my choice because I haven't forgot. But I'm not saying that no other artist should ever work with him because I relinquished my support because I haven't forgotten the past. Right. I understand that. My choice isn't something that I can force everybody. I can't force everybody else to disassociate from him. And especially if we're talking about somebody that's not a rapist, but still did some egregious shit, I can't force everybody to not bang with them. And as a matter of fact, being a product or not, not a product, being somebody who experienced an abusive relationship, I wouldn't want the rest of the world to shut down an abusive nigga either. And here's why. They need something to keep them busy to keep them away from their past victims. Let me let that marinate and I'm going to say it again just to make sure y'all understand what I'm saying. If an abusive nigga put his hands on somebody, and the rest of the world says, you can't work here. You can't work with this person, which means that you want them to, they don't deserve a job. They don't deserve their passion. They don't deserve their career. What are they going to do? They're going to harass. They're going to stay stuck on. They're going to have nothing else to think about but the person that they did that to. It's best for that person to stay busy and to go on and keep living their life away from the person they did it to. I do think that people who have put their hands on people in the past still deserve to live their life away from the person that they abuse. And if not, they're going to remain obsessed with their former victims. They are. They are. 
when it comes to the nigga that did it to me, oh, I hope he gets the jobs and relationships that he wants because it means that he's not going to be stalking and beating down my phone. Although he still does from time to time, but I can tell he's busier than what he used to be because he didn't have a job when he first did it to me. And it was annoying for me. Not only was it annoying, it's kept bringing back the memories, right? So people just want him to go lay in the corner and die. I don't have to like him. I still remember what he did. It stays fresh in my mind, but I still feel like he deserves his, his career, the ability to work. And for the people who decided to work with him, hey, you know, it is he a repeat offender? Yes. But again, he should stay busy enough. Otherwise, he'll sit there because they feel like you're property. And if there's nothing else going on for them to keep it, what, what did your mother used to tell you when you was a child? No, Rihanna's not his only victim. I get that. I see y'all saying that, you know, Karuchi, uh, Karuchi got a lifetime restraining order. I get that. But what did your mother used to, to uh, tell you when you were a child? An idle mind is a devil's workshop. And trust in, and, and, and please believe, and please believe that that devil in that workshop being hurt and upset that they can't work and keep their career and their passion, they're going to play back whoever they felt as though belonged to them and continue to bother them and harass them and whatever else they do. Let them move on. I don't bang with him, but I still feel like he deserves to move the hell on. Okay. Someone said, okay, Jane, I saw him stalking. Mm, right, right, but, right. But my point is, him sitting home, If think about, if Hollywood and everybody shuts him down and says, you can't work here, you can't work here, he, you can't work here, and you put him in and, 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 and isolate him completely, it's going to get worse. There are levels to harassment and bothering your former victims of said situation. And music is a gift that he has. Now, I, I mind you, and, and I say this repeatedly. Music is his gift and, and, and dancing is his gift and it's his talent. Let him do it. Now, he did it to Karuchi, but now she's got a lifetime restraining order. So if he does it again, now he's going to jail. So let's 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 keep going so we can keep this uh this conversation going. Okay. <laughs> I'm not condoning his action, but Choo Choo Train needs to worry about her assault that she took. Thank you. That's my point. Because her speaking on other people's situations, uh, it's weird. Uh, it's weird. Okay. They become fixated on that person if they have nothing else to do. That's why I'll be, I be praying and hoping that my former abuser can find a job and a career that he loves and gets into a, a, a relationship that knocks him off his feet because it'll mean that he will leave me the hell alone. That's what it's going to mean. And I can tell he done found it in between different points in time, but there's sometimes when I can tell, oh, you must have been dealing with somebody and they stopped dealing with you or you must have lost your job because you... You 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 text me from these random numbers eight times a day. You know what I mean? So when they're busy with however they're able to move on, it's better for their previous victims, believe it or not. And a lot of y'all might not want to hear that, but that's the truth. That's the uncomfortable truth that a lot of people are not, the conversation that a lot of people are not willing to have. If everybody that has ever put their hands on a woman is left to sit in a room and shrivel up and die and, and not allowed to enjoy their career or collaborate with anybody, it's going to get worse for the people that they used to do it to. Because all they have to do is to replay the memories that they had and feel like, you know what, if I say this to her, I might be able to make it right. If I say this to her, I might be able to get her back. If, and, then, and then they're just going to be trying all this other type of stuff through the phone. So again, do I bang with Chris? No, I don't. I will never forget. I will never be able to etch the images of Rihanna's face and what he did to her out of my mind. I'll never be able to etch that out. But I also don't think it's healthy to say that, you know, 
what was that? 2009. This is over 10 years ago. That was 10 years ago. Let's, let's still nail him to the cross and refuse to allow him to do anything in Hollywood. I just, I just don't think that it's worth that. I, I don't, that doesn't make sense. But nonetheless, okay, here's Chris in his first response, okay? He responds to her and says, <laughs> I'm getting a little tired of you, broken promise it, promise it. And so obviously, like, you know, he, uh, he screenshotted the tweet that she posted. And he says the following, obviously you're at a point in your life where either you are very broke or broken. The fact that you think you have, uh, you, you have to speak negatively about me makes you look so lame. Your life and career must suck right now. Minding your business would have been best, but I guess you don't have a business or a real job that makes you financially stable. I feel more embarrassed for you in your actual maturity, Chris says. I said, ooh. See, cause people look, regardless of what you feel like people's past are, same thing I said about Monique, not too long ago, Tuesday, Valentine's Day. You can say whatever you want to and about people. You cannot control how they respond. And you can't say, well, they, they responded to me. They're bothered. You tweeted the shit in the beginning. You were bothered. Like, them responding to you ain't illegal. Um, and it's, it, it's, 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 it's open season. It's equal opportunity at that point, right? Here's the next thing. He posted, he posted this meme of her and said, stop it. Just stop it right now. Chris, I don't even fuck with you, but that was funny. I, I you know, Rih Rihanna's my girl. Both of them, I was listening to Mad Rihanna, Mad Umbrella, and Mad Chris Brown Lottery, that single lottery at, when I was both in high school on my iPod. Matter of fact, it was first on my MP3 player, and then it was my iPod because I had upgraded to an iPod when I was like in the 10th grade. So I was banging with both of them. So I don't bang with Chris Brown no more. I really don't. You know, but I don't blame people who do, you know, but that shit was funny. Not stop it. <sighs> Not stop it, baby. I... <laughs> it was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really? I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. I still remember what my MP3 player looked like. I see some people in the chat talking about their MP3 player. Y'all remember it? Because it was when we downloaded the songs for the MP3 player, you would hear the DJ that like mixed or mastered, it'd be DJ No Nonsense or da da da. Like you would hear all that on your MP3 player. So yeah, it was it was it was definitely a time to be alive for sure. Oh, I miss those days. So let's get into the next thing that Chris Brown had to say. And thank y'all for hitting thumbs up on the video and for supporting. Okay. This 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 is a conversation that it might be sticky, it might be difficult, it might be uncomfortable for some people to have. I will never make excuses for an abuser. But let's continue, okay? DJ Switch up, Gangsta Grizzly, okay? <laughs> yes, that was when we was coming up off of the the CD, the handheld CD Walkman era. So then Chris Brown says, "If y'all still hate me for a mistake I made as a seventeen year old, please kiss my whole entire booty butt." I'm freaking 33 years old. I'm so tired of y'all turning, or I'm sorry, I'm so tired of y'all running with this narrative. You weird ass niggas are the same ones that tune in every week to see what Blueface and Chris Sean 
Oh, to see that Blueface and Krishan done beat the fuck out of one another in front of the world. Oh, but that's okay. Oh, but it's entertainment. All y'all can suck my thingalang disrespectfully. Oh, shit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now, you know, this is my first time reacting to this because I saw he was doing all this type and all I did was screenshot and format. I didn't even read them all the way, right? I didn't even read them. Now I'm like, ooh, do he got a point? Mm. I'm gonna read this next one and then I'm gonna get my thoughts. Oh, this should have been a separate video. This should have been a video within itself and I should have opened the phone lines. Where are the cancel culture with these white artists that date underage women? They beat the F out of their wives, giving bitches AIDS. Oh, that's right. They're your buddies. No more fake love from me. Stay out my way or get ran over. Simple as that. None of you and I, none of you and I, <clears throat> none of you. And I mean, now, if he had to put a comma here, I would have got this shit a, a, a lot easier. Shit. Put the damn comma after the damn you. None of you, comma. And I mean, none of you, comma. Niggas can fuck with me, is what he said. Okay. You know what, Leo, he, uh, Chris Brown got a point. He got a point, but let me get this goddamn cat out the room because he's, he's doing too much. Did I feed the cat in this video yet? Let me speak on this point real quick. Let me speak. Leo, here, you want a treat? He said, you know I want a treat. Here, come on. Hold on, let me put the thing down so that people can see you. And then we gonna get into what we feel about Chris Brown. What do you, what do you, what do you feel about Chris Brown and I? What do you, do you feel something? Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you going to stay in here instead of running off on the plug toy? All right, can you get down? Can you get down? Get down, get down. Thank you. Oh, not your butt. So I do think he has a point. I do think he has a point. I know a lot of y'all don't want to hear it. And look, <clears throat> niggas are the same ones that tune in every week to see Blueface and Krishan beat the fuck out of each other in front of the world. But that's okay. And I mean, we're talking about now they're uh, like the realm of redemption and remorse and all that other stuff, right? This was over 10 years ago that this happened. Chris lost a lot. He had a, a spearmint uh, sponsor, what do you call it? Sponsorship at that time. He lost that. Um, and he lost a lot of other stuff at that time as well. So I really wanted. Leo, you didn't even put in no work and I just paid you to co-host. I'm going to open the phone lines to see if anybody has anything to say. Um, if you would like to call in, definitely do so. And I'm going to finish articulating my thoughts on this and see if anyone wants to call in. Because unfortunately, for the sake of, I don't know, entertainment, viral moments, 
people have normalized um, people who, I don't know, they favor and the abuse that they receive or dish out. But for some reason, Chris Brown is still right it off for something that he did a while ago. I, I, I don't, is it, so I open the phone lines. Now he has a point. Now he went on to post hella stories of white people, like hell, hello white people who done abused and did violence. I mean, when I, t he literally posted about like 10 or 15 of them. And it was like, all right, slow down, brother. Cause like now you only you like, you know, right, you know, like no. don't get off track. Don't move the goalpost. But you know, he he has a point with the Krishan and Blueface. People are interested in seeing Krishan and Blueface fight to the point where let's keep it a bean. If Krishan and Blueface weren't fighting, would they even have the show on 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 uh Zeus, the fact that they fight all the time is the reason why they have the show on Zeus. <laughs> and 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 if I didn't know no better, and if I hadn't done any research, I would swear up and down Zeus was run by white people. No, it's ran by Lou Mel, a young black man. So if it wasn't for them going viral for fighting and putting their hands on one another all of the goddamn time. They wouldn't even have what they have. Times have fucking changed. And it's sad. We've got a caller backstage. If you want to call in, make sure you put put like the siren emoji in the um, in the chat. If you want to call in, we've got a caller right here. We're going to go ahead and bring this caller up in one moment. But I need to let this cat out because he is um, doing too much. But if you want to call in and contribute to the conversation before we move on to the next topics, be sure to put some sirens in the chat down below and let me know if I need to drop the link again. Okay? Let me let Leo out this goddamn room. Leo. Get down. Get down. It's not a thank you because it's not a question. All right. God damn it, the motherfucking call alert. So, um, and it's not to say that what, Chris, okay, the call is back. It's not to say that what Chris did is okay. Chris is talking about the results of people who are doing this stuff present day and something that he did that's literally over a decade stale, well over a decade stale. And people still want to burn him at the stake, but Blueface sitting up there just, you know, casually just, you know, hitting Krishan back. I feel like they both started. Some people want to say, no, Blueface is just, uh, Krishan hit him first. So all, you know, both of them are in an abusive relationship. Sometimes Krishan starts and she hits him first. Sometimes he starts it. None of it is okay, though. And none of them are shamed the way that Chris has been shamed in general. So we are about to bring our caller up here. Make sure y'all hit thumbs up. All right. And let's get into hearing about um, what different people think about this situation outside of myself. Okay. The following video is broadcasting live and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. All right. Sugar Mafia. Thank you for calling in. You're live on the air. What are your thoughts? Hi. Can y'all hear me? Mm-hmm. Oh, hi, Jane. Love your show. Hi. I love what you stand for. Thank you. Hey, stickies. <laughs> um, I just wanted to come on and say, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous right now because it's like, I'm so accustomed just watching. So it's kind of a little different just talking, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So when it comes about this Chris Brown situation, I'm kind of like kind of both ways with it. I understand where he comes from with it. Um, Him talking about has been, what he said, like 15 years, 16 years that 
he's talking about with the whole Rihanna situation. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like other people is talking about, yes, you're talking about that, about what happened 16 years ago, but the thing that you did after that, it still was a continuance of your behavior. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if it was only that situation, it's like, I could understand like, okay, he moved on. He was very young and he passed from that. People make mistakes. But when it's a continuous situation, it's like, um, where are we going with this? What what are we forgiving you for? Why should we ignore the situation that you keep putting yourself into? Yes, you're quiet. Yes, you keep to yourself. But the things that we do hear about you, it's not good. But so, when's the last time we heard anything, though? Um, I will could I could remember the last time we heard of some something about him was. I don't know which came first. I don't know if it was the Scucci situation when she got the restraining order um, against him, or it was the comment when he said about black women, about you know the good hair situation, which he kind of clapped back on that. And I feel like that's where he lost his audience from because I feel like when it came to the Rihanna situation, a lot of white media already wanted to cut him off, already wanted to push him to the side and cancel him. Mm -hmm. um, and it was more of our, you know, community that supported him and mainly black women because it was like, OK, if, she, if Rihanna forgave him and moved on and tried to be in a situation while he was with Karuchi because she was the side chick for a moment or she was trying to say I could take the, my man back if I want to type of mm -hmm. behavior she had. If we could pass that, we could support him. But when he started insulting black women, that's when he kind of lost his base. And that's when we put to the side and we was like, oh, well, we don't care what you're doing no more. We don't care what happened to you. So now white media is getting on his on his ass and we're not mm -hmm. we're standing to the side because that's what you you asked for. Um, I don't see a lot of white media coming after him per se. I see more of us and I do follow white media, but, and look, I'm not making excuses. Like I said, I do not like, I just, I can't, it, I can't, it's not that I can't get over what he did to Rihanna. I can't forget what he did to Rihanna. So I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't condone anything. I don't go listening to his stuff. I don't download his stuff. I refuse to. Because I stand by my original feeling of, I can't believe you did that to her. And even the woman you did it to afterwards. However, you know, when it comes to other artists that want to work with him or other people that want to support him, there are a lot of color. Who was the person? Tory Lanez had a, had a little moment where he faked like... It, yeah. He had his little moment where he faked like he was overcoming colorism, but it was staged and stuff like that. So yeah, it's with that very, model when yeah, he did with the music video. It's very selective with who people want to make sure it sticks to. People want to forget and, and detach what you know Tori did, but they want to make sure everything sticks like glue to him. So I'm not like taking up for Chris, but it's kind of like where we are in this day and age. It's the selective, uh, the bottom line of what Chris is saying, it's the selective outrage. I did this shit 10 years ago. I did this violent shit 10 years ago. I had a color now, and I, what you were talking about with the colorist thing, it was 2019 for him. And, you know, which was a few years ago, but it's selective. So does that mean he's not allowed to collaborate with anybody because he did that in 2019? Because you got so many people, hashtag, and it's still free Tory and Megan Lai, but they don't want to stick that type of same Colorist, yeah, I'm standing up for colorism. They don't want to stick that to Tory. You got people trying to take down Chris and stand up for Tory. When I mean, if if we gonna, you know, call a spade a spade, then y'all should be calling Tory colorist too and mm -hmm. holding to the same standard. You know, and unfortunately, in our 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 community, black people can be sometimes unforgivable. And yep. you feel like you don't have the right to overcome said situation. And y'all got to understand what, what, what type of mind frame and mindset that puts people in, right? When people go to jail for what they go to jail for and they get out, if they aren't able to find any opportunity, they become more problematic and more violent and more, yeah. more criminal. I'll go back what they, what they so, went in the beginning for, for survival. Right. 
Like, so you you might not bang with him. And and most of the people speaking out, they don't have any association with him. They're not, they're not fighting their own. I don't want to be associated. You're not associated with him. You're just speaking out, right? And so it's like, I don't want to be associated. Me personally, I don't want to be associated with, with Chris Brown. And so I am not. But if we would shut every person down who has ever done something wrong and to say, you don't have the right to have your career. You don't have the right to still pursue your passion. You don't have the right to work any Anywhere, even if it ain't me, that would make them more of a beast and make them duplicate and amplify. And it, it would get, you know what I mean? Like you, like it, it, it doesn't make sense to do shit like that to people. Yeah. And this is not the first time that he actually, you know, had an outburst like this. Cause years ago, I remember when he actually threw the chair out the window and some, I think it was um, good morning America. And I knew from then mm -hmm. I was like, he's tired of hearing about the whole Rihanna's situation, because in that time I was like, okay, this is unnecessary, because that time he was like 19 or something, and this was years, was it 19? Or he was like 21, this was like two years later of the situation, it was like, okay, you guys need to stop talking about this, because he did say, before of the interview, don't ask no questions about the whole Rihanna situation, because he was trying to, you know, build himself after that, but Tasha it went talks. Like I, I don't, I don't, I don't know how, how if, I don't know when the last time you used the Q-tip, um, Tasha talks. Nobody said Rihanna was dark skin. What are you talking about? We talking about another moment that Chris Brown had when he was being colorist. We're not talking about Rihanna. So I just hope that you can keep up. You know what I mean? Before you haphazardly comment things that don't make any sense. Nobody on this panel sat up here and said Rihanna was dark skin. But continue. Yeah, she's brown, but. Anywho, um, so I remember he had that in that outburst that he had years ago. Um, so I feel like years later, like he's just tired and fed up. Not to say that I defend him or anything, but I understand where he's coming from because especially when it came to the comment of Blueface and Krishan, which is like, I don't know why you put them in there, but it is what it is. I kind of understand where he was coming from because I feel like when he opened up about the relationship with him and Rihanna had, it was kind of like Blueface and Krishan, as in mm -hmm. them doing, you know, being in the celebrity limelight, um, basically doing their own thing, being in a relationship publicly, taking drugs, being abusive to each other, not just one side. It was both right. of them putting hands on each other because he even said that he had to wear glasses and stuff to cover his black eyes and his scratches. So... Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what he said. I mean, I don't fully believe because, you know, you do have, you know, especially when it comes to abusers, they always like to sprinkle things to make themselves look a little, make themselves look a little innocent as well, too, to say, oh, it wasn't that yeah. bad. It was just like, bro, it, you look at her face, it was really bad. But um, I was just saying, as I said, like, he was just, I feel like he just mentioned that to say, yes, it that time, those times, it was toxic. I was in a toxic relationship, and you guys ridiculed me for that. And up to this day, you still do. Now, when you see it in public, and you guys are praising this, got a whole network behind this, and money is just, what What are we doing here? So I'm still getting backlash for, for this, but y'all praising these people for it. Which, as you said, selective, you know, support. Which it's we, select, yeah, selective support and selective outrage for sure. Let me just say this: the chat is letting me know that it wasn't a misunderstanding with what was stated here. It was somebody in the chat called Rihanna dark skin. So to that Tasha talks, I do apologize. I do apologize. She said Rihanna's not dark skin. I thought she was talking about our dialogue and implied that our dialogue called it, but apparently somebody in the chat called it. I don't know. I can't keep up with the chat. My bad. That's why I need to stop looking at the chat. I'm sorry, Tasha talks. If you're still watching, that's my fault. Um, but yeah, I I, I I I still feel like he has the right to move on. I still feel like he mm -hmm. has the right to still, if singing is his pet, if you if you take people's passions away from them, especially if you're talking about a free citizen, we're not even talking about somebody that's incarcerated. That you can, if you take somebody, if you put a famous painter in jail and take their passion away from them, that's enough to drive them crazy. But you talk yeah, about that's a free person who has access to whatever the case is, and you take their passion away from them, that can make them a little more unhinged than maybe they were to begin with. Mm -hmm. So I just don't 
for the people that are willing to work with him and associate with him, let them, you know what I mean? Like let them, um, yeah, those, those, those are, those are, those are my thoughts. Yeah. Because even what he said is like, if we've got to, you know, cross him off, there's a lot of people we got to cross off in the industry that we mm -hmm. still listen to up to this day. Right. So, and that's a whole handful. Cause if that was the case, we wouldn't be listening to nobody, no, nobody. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Um, Cash BKNY, what are your thoughts? And thank you for coming on live on the air. Good evening. So I agree with Sugar Mafia um, and you, right? So I don't condone his what happened between him and Rihanna. But at one point in time, both of them had said that they were combative towards each other. Um but everyone has the right to grow, right? For him, he's very talented, right? Dr. Dre and them, they just did the Super Bowl last year, along with Eminem, and they have a huge history of not only being sexist, misogynistic, and putting a pause on multiple people, whether they were in a relationship with them or outside of a relationship with them, and multiple people have watched it. Right. For Chris Brown, he's very passionate. He can dance his behind off. And I think it's a certain level. Like I'm from the inner city and in the inner city. There's a certain level of aggression that a lot of us have. Right. So if someone is looking at what I might have done when I was 17, 18, 19, 20, it's much different than how I behave myself in my mid 30s. I have more skills. And I can recognize that I can remove myself from a situation versus reacting. And I don't mm -hmm. think he's given that same opportunity. And for Kylie Williams, she just keeps popping up and in and out and inserting herself into stuff. And nobody ain't asked for her, right? She had that whole little show on BT. She ended up. The least the, talented of all of them. Hello. And she ended it's up stirring been. up the controversy saying she didn't want to be a part of it then she went away now she's back and she's coming up like who needs to know you had a train ran on you if Hello? I was husband, like no one asked for that information and the whole blue and Krishan stuff I feel bad for Krishan and Blueface. they need to just separate themselves and whack 100 again he's oh old. god I couldn't even comprehend. <laughs> Black, he he jumped into everything. I'm reading his, you know, his caption and, and what he's saying. And I'm like, what? I, you know, he he gossips more than the gossip blog. And he's and like, older he than all of them. He's older than all of them, right? Krishan gets gaslit, right? They know how to push her buttons to do things to get her to react because they know she's a live wire. All they have to do is tap a little bit, push a little bit to try and provoke her, and she's going to give them what they want. And for her, I felt like she definitely needs some help. She needs support. Zeus Network is exploitive. They end up getting people on there who need therapy, but instead of therapy, it's par for the course. They get up there, they get them to act the fool, they give them some alcohol, and then they end up on the shade room. They end up going viral on Facebook. I think that a lot of those people need to stop with the selective outrage. I'm a big Jay-Z fan. However, there was a time where there was a video circulating in terms he said they was playing where he smacked the woman in the face, right? Oh, I remember so that when he mushed her. <laughs> he, I remember that, right? <laughs> but yet he's revered, right? And I know you, you're from Baltimore. I'm from Brooklyn. I don't know where you are, Sugar Mafia. but I'm from Brooklyn. Of, huh? I'm from Brooklyn. Ow. <laughs> but <laughs> we're taught a certain way in terms of how we play, how we communicate. And it's a certain part where you have to kind of unlearn certain things because you can't do that in corporate America. You can't do that in society. The rules that apply in the hood doesn't apply everywhere. And it's unfair mm -hmm. that Chris Brown can't shake it off. But Beats by Dre, it's named Beats by Dre, and he definitely put some beats <laughs> on a whole bunch of people, okay? 
<laughs> no, the, the NFL had him up there. It was a huge production. Eminem choked out Kim multiple times, right? Yes. Eminem is revered. So why can't he get a chance? You know, when we talk about like these different people and comparing this situation to other more present day circumstances, I think it speaks to the double standards and how people want to live in that time and this time at the same time, simultaneously. They want to be like, well, in 2009, we wasn't having that. But present day, they they pay for Zeus Network to see Krishan and Blueface fight. And I think it's bullshit, right? And, you know, to the notion of... um apparently what the, the 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 thought that Rihanna and Chris Brown um were in a quote unquote combative relationship you know they're different injuries right let's say you go to court and somebody shoved you in the parking lot of Walmart and you pull out your gun and you kill them or you beat them to a pulp now they blind or they can't or they got the pictures that look like Rihanna and all they did was push you right? There are limitations in different like situations in which you shouldn't have fucking done that. I've been in situations pistol with me and have me bloody faced and with a, a two broken ribs. You know what I'm saying? So when people say, oh, they were in a mutually combative relationship, it wasn't a Krishan blue face type thing. Did she shove him once or twice, whatever? And one thing that I do know about light-skinned people, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm light-skinned. I don't know. But when bruises show up, they show up. And so for me to believe that Chris Brown ever like had his ass beat by Rihanna, it would be very easy to prove if he had to just simply took a picture on his own or whatever. He's saying, oh, I was wearing glass. I just... You know, a push, a slug, a, a, a push, a shove, a slap, a punch, broken ribs, beaten to a pulp are two different things. But, you know, to Chris Brown's point, because he does have a point. They be they be beating the shit out of each other. Krishan, Blueface, it really is. And for some reason, they are sensationalized. Meanwhile, Chris, and, and this is present day. Meanwhile, Chris Brown is still penalized. Oh, bars. They're sensationalized while Chris Brown is still penalized based off of what happened over a decade ago. It's strange to me, even though I still don't rock with it, which is the reason why I don't listen to his music. I still think that Chris Brown is talented as hell. I do, but I don't rock with his music because I grew up in the era where I saw that happen in real time. And I felt like he was so wrong for that. But I can't force the rest of society and the rest of the world to agree with me and disassociate with him because that's what I'm doing. I can't expect every other. Now, uh, like I said, anything outside of rape is like I can't control people. And not, not to even say I can't control people that wanted to work with Robert, right? Especially after it came out what he was doing. But it's like everybody not going to disassociate just because you want them to. And trying to attempt to shame people, I don't feel like it is um, an efficient way of going about educating people on what you think. It's just not. I... I, I I, I, I just don't, I, like I said, what Chris Brown did was wrong, and that's why I still don't bang with him. But I do feel like there are levels to ways that you defend yourself. If I was in the parking lot right now and a white woman hit me with a cart on purpose and I turned around and I beat the shit out of her, they're going to press charges because was that really warranted? Nope. They talk about different degrees. If somebody mm -hmm. taps you, you can't knock them out. <laughs> like, you know, so it's different levels. Maybe she shoved him. Maybe she put his, her finger. It, the, what we were hearing around that time was she kept like pointing her finger in his face or whatever. You know, it's different levels to how you defend yourself. And so beating somebody to the point of what Rihanna's face was isn't yeah equivalent to what we saw any injuries that we saw that Chris Brown sustained 
Chris Brown afterwards with no pictures, right? And 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 think about it. If it was your son or your cousin or, your, or even if it was you, and you felt like shit, I beat the shit out this woman. The world is looking at me like I'm crazy. Let me take a picture of my face because my face is bruised too, so I can prove that we ain't never seen no pictures of his face fucked up. It sounds like an excuse to me. He would, it, it, and not to say that he would. He could have took the picture for his own records and not even sold it to TMZ. Just for his own, just so that he know these people gonna think that I. And, and it's very easy to tell with a light skinned person like Chris. So, but a lot of people don't think like that, right? Like if you grow up in a top a celebrity, a ce uh, no, 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 no. talking about but, celebrity with a lot to lose that already him, has a team. He grew of up people. in an abusive household, right? So a lot of people, if they're used to seeing that go on back and forth, it's normalized to them. Yeah, and I right? feel like also so with him in this like, situation, I feel like he blacked out. When you and angry and you're that right. you black out. It, and, right, and that's not an excuse. Let me just address this one comment from this sock in the comments. White what? women are not running around hitting black people with shopping carts. Actually, yes, they are. I've seen it several times, and I've actually avoided it twice. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know where you live, or if you feel like maybe like your state or your city or your district is the only like place to reside. But white women do hit black people with their shopping carts sometimes. It's called entitlement. It's called privilege. It's called a Karen. So it does happen. I didn't pull that example out of my ass. It happens quite frequently. And what I'm saying is, if and when it happens to me, I don't then have the excuse to beat her to a bloody pulp. And I'm excused because I say, well, she pushed me. She ran over my foot with that cart. So I did X, Y, Z. So yeah, it does happen. But I would ma imagine your response now is different than when you were on the cusp of adulthood even when it, it no i mean even as in a child when i was in high school there's a difference between even being in high school and a certain type of fight it's a different when somebody come up and punch you in the face all right bitch we fighting somebody come up and they you know push you and knock your books over all right we fighting but if somebody just want to have a like little shoving match it there are different levels to fights that's what i'm saying and but what my um, what about spitting though? Because as I heard about the situation too, because some people, as you said, some people said that she shoved his face. Some people said, but I've also heard that he punched her in the mouth and she got upset to the point that she spit in his face. And that's when all that went off. That's where you start. Fighting over his phone. That's right? where you start. You started with he punched her in the mouth, and if right. somebody punched, him, especially a man, punches me in the mouth. I just might spit back at you because, again, that's not the same as a shove or as a little, oh, you just walked past me and my shoulder just did all that. Like, that's, you know, that's like a heavy push. A heavy push compared to a punch in the mouth are two totally different levels of fighting and self-defense. Well, what I'm was saying, though, is more than when she spit in his face, that's when supposedly he blacked out and actually went left and beat her the way how he did. So someone's saying she spit blood in his face, so she was already bleeding from an injury that he gave her, right? Yeah. Is, is that what I'm getting? So like, I heard, that's yeah, what I heard I'm saying that, that you know, there was a fight over a phone. That's he how had already hit her to the point she was already bleeding based off of something he did to her, and she was already bleeding. See, I this heard is, something different. I heard no, no, it was the phone first. The phone, right? Yeah, it they was the phone. Fighting. That was arguing the phone. over the phone. That's what happened. I heard it started over the phone, and she hit him while he was driving over the phone. You know, we weren't in the car, so we don't know where it start. Where we it don't know, but we yeah. know the if, if you are, if you, this is the when she went to the police officers. There's a whole mugshot that he had gotten everything right. Because he did this to her. Did mm -hmm. the mugshot reflect these injuries? No. Nope. That we're discussing. Did they? No. And how far afterwards was the mugshot taken? I don't even remember. How I don't remember. It wasn't I was weeks just a teenager. Later. It, it wasn't weeks later. The fact of the matter is these injuries weren't present that a lot of people like to hypothesize about. Now, I'm not saying that there might not have been a scuffle or she didn't shove him or put a finger on his face or whatever the case is. All I'm saying is what he did to her versus whatever the rumors and assumptions say that she did to him, they were nowhere near equivalent. And that's and the part. 
where yeah, everyone has true. triggers, different triggers. What will trigger me might not trigger somebody else and vice versa. I believe in giving people their personal space. Don't disrespect my personal space and you don't have to worry about me disrespecting yours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. I agree with that as well. Right? Because for somebody, a finger point is something triggering. You can right. say what you want. Don't put your hands in my face. Don't spit at me or don't look like you're about to hit me because I have the right to defend myself. Right. Within reason. And that's always the thing. Even when you go to court, even when you go to court, within reason, you can't go to court and say, I beat this person to a bloody pulp because they shoved me or because they put their finger in my face or and I and I get it. Spit is an assault and it's an extreme level of disrespect. Don't get me wrong. It is. I'm not excusing it, but I'm just saying when you go to the court of law, you're thinking about having your freedom taken away from you and, and your family and your kids and everybody you love. You can't say. I almost killed this person because they spit on me. You can, you say whatever you want to say, but that's, that's not gonna, that's not an equal level of, okay, they did something on a level three and you did something on a level three, four, two. Like, no, they did something on a level three and you did something on a level of 19. Like, uh-huh. and I'm, I'm, I'm not saying don't defend yourself. I'm not saying just take no shit. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying moderation and understanding the different levels of it are a thing. Somebody could hit you with a cart. That don't mean you can go pop the trunk and shoot them. You know what I'm saying? Like there are levels to how you defend yourself. That's all. That that that's that's really all I'm saying here. And Chris Brown had none of these injuries that people want to talk about. Um, and even in the mugshot, none of these injuries. And 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 you know, like now if he was dark skin, you could say you might not be able to see light skin people. The injury show. I can have somebody squeeze my arm moderately tight, and I got a bruise. I, I wasn't even in a. Sometimes I wrestle. But <laughs> injuries on light-skinned people, they show up and they've got a nerve to last a while. They be pink, yellow, uh, green, purple, blue, all types of colors. Chris Brown didn't have any of that present. And so what he did in a way he wilded out on her, um, it was wild. It was wild. But but I say all that to say, like I can I can get into the the like the nitty-gritty and everything, but for Kylie or Keely. To, to say whatever uh, she's saying about him not being able to make music. Look, I don't fuck with him, but I do know he's making music and it's still charting. I don't know. Uh, and she can't even charting. sing. She can't sing. You know what no, I'm saying? Can't, and, sing, can't dance, well. can't talk, can't do nothing. You know, and I feel like she's a jealous flop. She's the only flop of 3LW. Those two women that still went off and made amazing things of themselves in, in, you know, in Hollywood and the industry in general. And I feel like she likes to start fires and sit back and laugh. If I were to pull up this picture, hold on, of the thumbnail, because I was on her Twitter and I was going to go through her Twitter, but we've taken enough time. She said, I got this man typing the day child because she see she like to trigger people um, or say stuff about people and do things. But then, yeah, he started typing. He started responding to her. But honestly, if we're going to keep it a buck, you started typing about him first and you typed damn near a paragraph. OK, so uh, she likes to sit up and set fires and sit back and do this evil laugh. And that's exactly why she ain't nowhere with her goddamn career as it is now. She likes to cause trouble. She thought she was safe because her mother was the manager of the 3LW group. And she's very like maniacal. She she thought she could get away with whatever. And that's why she's sitting back there untalented. Um can barely dance, can barely hold a note. If it wasn't for the wispiness in her voice, it wouldn't be appealing. I still don't think her voice is naturally appealing, but with all the work that was done on the on the record of the song, it was it, the the end record within the um the encore on BET, I do think it was a good record. I do think that they could be a group if they could put everything aside, but she can't dance. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but none the, I I just felt like Keely herself was audacious and again, there was a tweet that Chris Brown had put in his stories about how she wanted to see more of Krishan and Blueface. She was like, oh, I need to see this. Oh, yeah. I need mm-hmm. to see the. Oh, you want to see Krishan and Blueface fight and attack each other and assault one another. But you out here speaking out and making statements about Chris Brown from over 10 years ago. That doesn't make sense. And so it's the hypocrisy within the entire situation 
that is really the main focal point here. She enjoys seeing some of this shit present day, just like a lot of other people do. But she still wants to hold Chris Brown to a standard that she won't hold Blueface and Krishan to. She won't speak out against them. So, but she won't even hold the standard on even on herself because once she the same one that threw chicken in her own member's face. At the hello, mm -hmm. hello. <laughs> so, and she told her to get over it when she came out and told the story. I think it was B T, not B T. It's unsung or something like that when Atari was yeah. up there uncensored, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she tweeted that she needed to get over it. But she's on Chris Brown's neck. I don't understand. Um, and Blueface and Krishan, they're not teenagers. They're at least in their mid twenties. Blueface might be in his thirties. I don't know. No, nah. <laughs> he looking like he is. <laughs> right, I do. It is. This was such a great conversation. I enjoyed taking these calls before I got to the other topics. Um, and thank y'all for calling in, even though we didn't agree on everything. I do still respect you all calling because I know there are some people that do resonate with what y'all having to say in the chat, and they don't resonate with what I have to say. But I enjoy not having an echo chamber of a channel and opening up the phone lines when it's appropriate. And y'all calling in was everything to me. Thank you all so much for your support. Thank you for You're this very welcome. And your channel is building back up again. Yes. Child, we, we trying, child. <laughs> climbing to the top. Don't be saying trying. You're doing it. You're climbing to the top. We all right. Are. We is trying, but thank you all so much. I hope that y'all have an amazing weekend and I look forward to seeing y'all in the chat. Okay. Good all right. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Let me see. What is going on? Somebody said the plaintiff Shane, I don't understand why you kept up for Chris saying 10 years ago as if he doesn't have recent incidents of abuse with other women other than Rihanna. Um and again, it's not like me capping for him, right? Child, did you just did you just get here? Because again, I'm saying when you have an abuser who is isolated, right? Where society shuts them down, the industry in which they love or, or their wherever their career takes place, the environment of their career, when you shut that down, they have nothing else to do but to reflect on the people that they used to abuse and continue to try to find ways to reach out and harass them. And so I think it makes sense to allow him to move on. If you don't want to bang with him, myself included, I don't bang with Chris Brown. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't have the right to move on and bang with other entities that will allow him in. If not, he's going to sit and fester about previous thoughts, previous victims, and it'll be worse for those former victims. That's the point that I'm saying. And I've stated that time and time again. So. I'm not capping for an abuser. Hello, I've been in an abusive relationship. I've been, I, the nigga that abused me, hawk spit in my face five times in a row, choked me, dragged me multiple times, vandalized my apartment, right? Vandalized my mailbox, broke into my apartment every day when I was at work. I would never make an excuse for an abuser. That was one of the most difficult times in my life I can, like ever. And I was a runaway as a teenager. That was the most difficult time of my life. But what I can tell you is when that abusive nigga that you leave is not busy with whatever the hell he wants to do, whatever new relationship and whatever new career path he wants to indulge in, it becomes worse for you being the former victim. And so whatever place wants to hire him, oh, trust me, I don't want him to be without work. Oh, he needs to work so that he can leave me the hell alone. Whatever other woman is willing to give him a chance, he needs to deal with that woman because that means that there's a less probability of him dealing with me. So I don't think that abusers should have no other opportunities in the world because all they'll do is just sit and think with nothing else to do and continue to harass whoever, one, two, three people, however many victims they've had and make it worse for that person. That's the synopsis of this discussion here. Okay. So I've been there before. So I know I have a unique opinion and it takes a while to kind of articulate it. And I, I see you just said you just got here, but that's the truth of the matter about abusive niggas. When they ain't got nothing to lose because they literally don't have a job or, or a place to stay or a new woman to deal with. Oh, I'm never going to try and call up a nigga that abused me. I'm trying to call him to his job or call his girl and get them people to break up with him or, or part times. Oh, no. He needs to be as busy as possible so he can leave me alone. That's the whole point. 
Okay. So that's what we're saying. That's that's what I'm saying, particularly. And when it comes to Keely, Kylie, whatever you want to call her, sure. Um, uh, she's just a jealous flop. She don't even know what's going on with it with with music. Talking about he can't even make his own music. He's got a leech off. He's been making his own music, and I know that. I haven't been listening to it. The only time I listen to it is if I'm like listening to the radio because I haven't gotten the car and I just like you the radio dial it just like comes on but I haven't downloaded uh um Chris Brown's music since that stuff happened uh, my Apple music is full of full of but I haven't downloaded his stuff because I refuse I, re I personally refuse to support Chris Brown I refuse because I will never forget but I'm not going to force other people to I'm not going I can't force other people you know um, so that's that. All right. Um, it's the same thing. Like I said, when people get out of jail and they can't find any job, they gonna go right back to their life of crime. There's gotta be an IHOP or a McDonald's or somebody that's going to take them in. Otherwise they're going to get right back to doing what they were doing. Right. They have the right to integrate with society again. Only the people who are willing to work with them you know what i mean um so you know that's that current former abusers they need to stay busy so that they can lead the people that they done victimized alone and that's the best way i could put it all right so I do want to know your final thoughts and unanswered questions about this situation. I just shared mine. I would love for you all to comment yours down below in the chat. Um, how do you think that this is going to affect Chris Brown's long-term career success? Chloe Bailey, do you think it's going to have a negative effect on her? I really love her. That's my girl. Um, Chloe and Holly are going through it right now. And also, um, what, what, what have you noticed about this situation? Okay, what additional conclusions have you reached? I pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts and where do you land on this situation? Okay, we've got more things to get into. I want to talk about the Bernie Mac show curse. A lot of people think that Bernie Mac is rolling over in his grave. And I want to know how you all, um, if you agree about it, we really need to just unpack it slightly. A little bit to unpack. We've got a sequel to a Will Smith movie that is coming out. I'm not sure how to feel about it, but I do want to know how you feel about it. All right. Any and all, somebody said Marcus Houston. Yes, he is. Yes, Marcus Houston. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. All right. Um, Let's go ahead and get into our next topics. Listen, if you're looking for a way to support the show, please make sure that you hit the thumbs up button because it's free. The like button, the thumbs up button is a free way to support the show. You can also share the video, but also my cash app is listed right here on the screen. All right. Dollar sign T-H-A, plain as Jane. I also have it conveniently running across the banner below this video. And we're just going to go ahead and keep it pushing and get into our next topics. All right. Let's go. Get into this black owned business, Dickies. It's got things for inside your home, outside your home, and even on the go. JasmineMadeIt.com is your new destination for black owned magic mugs, tumblers, and even wine glasses. You can even customize the tumblers and wine glasses. There's a lot going on for a low price over at jasminemadeit.com. And if you've been serious about wanting to support more Black-owned businesses, here's your chance. Let jasminemadeit.com handle all your problems for family and friends. You ever had a friend over and they just wasn't catching the hint or paying the rent? Our asses all get to stepping. <laughs> yeah, tell them to get to stepping with this nostalgic Mart themed doormat and shop over a dozen different doormat designs over on jasminemadeit.com. All right, stickies, you know what time it is. It's time to put your money where your mouth is and shop black today. Make life easier for you and your household by taking your family's hot or cold beverages on the go with one of these unique tumblers. It's insulated to keep your beverage at temperature and it comes with a few different reusable straws and even the specific brush that you need to wash it so you can keep it sanitized and germ free. 
They've got all kinds of designs to match your mood or style. So grab something for your wife, the hubby, or even the kids over on jasminemadeit.com. That's jasminemadeit.com. And I'll see you over there. All right. And we are back. And don't forget, that is a Black-owned business, okay? You can use my code Jane for 10% off, J-A-N-E. No minimum purchase requirement. Even if you're just getting one item, you can use my code to get 10% off. I love my tumbler. It does a really good job of keeping my drinks hot or cold. I took this and I made some hot tea when I was sick a while ago. And I went on a trip to Target, three targets away from me, literally. And I made the hot tea. I went in the Target. I came out and the tea was still hot. So it does a really good job of insulating your beverages, keeping them cold or hot, whichever one they are. So I really, really, really enjoy this cup. And I need to get another one so I can take it to work. I don't want anybody at work to know what my like, you know, like online thing is. So I need to, I'm probably going to get one of the coach looking ones. Y'all saw the ones that have like the coach design on there. <clears throat> I think I'm going to order that one to take to and from work. And yes, I'm going to use my own goddamn code. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to use my own code to get a discount. <laughs> um, so, um, Let's keep it pushing. That was a that was this that was definitely a sticky situation that we just got into. It took a little, it took a lot longer actually than I thought it was gonna take. Um, shout out for Lindsay for joining a membership. I appreciate you so much. Um, Chris Stokes, his old manager, is a Peter. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Shout out to Linda. Thank you so much for the cash app. I appreciate it. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> I just got a text message from my whole girl. She is hilarious as she watches this stream. I see you, girl. All right. So we got a Will Smith movie. That's getting a sequel. Let's talk about that. Okay. Y'all know on Fridays, I bring the girls out. It's Saturday. I couldn't get to y'all yesterday. So I got the girls out today. It's Saturday. And so I love Will Smith. He definitely had his moment where he made his mistake. Again, another person who just, uh, they don't want to unnail him from the cross, child. They don't want to unnail him from the cross. And here's what's going on here. Will Smith, Michael B. Jordans, right? I am legend too. The plot details have been revealed so basically, they're going to make another I Am Legend, okay? They're going to make another I Am Legend. And they're casting Michael B. Jordan, okay? Put a one in the chat if you've seen I Am Legend before. I think it's an amazing movie. For you to be able to be as skilled, as to be able to act in the film when it's just you. It's like being as skilled as uh, Steve off of Blue's Clues. <laughs> Steve off Blue Clues was up there all by himself in front of that green screen just acting, right? Will Smith is, I mean, I just, one of my favorite movies from Will Smith is, if not the favorite movie from Will Smith. Dare I say that's probably my favorite film from him is I am legend because I cried when he had to put down his own dog because his dog had got infected out there <sighs> really good you know hold, hold on y'all real quick real quick real quick My favorite part about I Am Legend was when Will Smith, remember he used to talk to the mannequins every day. Society was gone. He was, him and his dog, they was like the only ones up there in New York. And he went to use his radio at noon every day when the sun was highest in the sky to see if there was anybody else out there. 
and he would like go to the movie store, like, like what was a blockbuster at that time. And the different mannequins was set up in there and shit. And Will would go in there and be talking to the mannequins. Hey, how you doing? Like <laughs> He had like tricked his mind into thinking that like there was still people around in order to like to survive. I guess anybody would go crazy if they were the only person on earth, so to speak. And so Will in there talking to them damn mannequins. I mean, like leaving money on the counter and everything. And so there was one point where there was this female mannequin and he was talking to his dog like, I think I'm going to say hi to her tomorrow. I think I think I, think I like her. I think I'm going to try to holler. He was like, no, nah, I can't holler at her. She's not going to want me. Like, da, da, da. <laughs> and then he went in there, right? He went in there. He was, and then he tried, you know, he built up the courage to try to like ask out this woman that was literally a mannequin. He was like, hello. And then obviously she didn't say anything back. And he was like, please say hi to me. And he started like getting teary eyed. That was one part, right? But no, the funniest part was he had all the mannequins named. So one of the mannequins in his daily going, and obviously he's the one setting up these mannequins. Like he's the one. One of the mannequins names was... <laughs> One of the mannequins' names was Frank, right? And so one day he had went out there and Frank was in a different place than he put Frank. Like, so he knew something was up with Frank. And it's like, you got enough sense to understand that these mannequins aren't real, but sometimes you cry and get emotional when the mannequins don't talk back to you, but you know you place in these lifeless, you know what I mean? It was a it was a, a certain level of hysteria that I don't think any of us know, right? And so one day he like pulls up and he sees like Frank sitting out in the spot that he just like, he did not put, he was like, Frank, Frank, you, you fucking with me, Frank. <laughs> but honestly, he was right on the money with that because the Dark Seekers, if, you, if you've ever seen the movie, <laughs> If you've ever seen a movie, the Dark Seekers took Frank and tricked him into, like, you know, doing his thing. So in the middle of him talking to Frank and trying to go up to Frank and figure out what's going on with Frank, it was this trap. And the Dark Seekers had, you know, got his foot caught. It, it, it was a thing. It was a thing. Somebody in the comments said, Jane will watch this movie more than once. Yes, I have. It's one of my favorite movies. <laughs> He wanted to ask that lady out. He was like, please say hi to me. And he got all teary-eyed and started crying because that woman wasn't responding. He thought it was a rejection. No, baby, it's a mannequin. So, um, yeah, yo, when Frank was out there, he was like, Frank, stop fucking with me, Frank. That's what he said. Stop, stop fucking with me, Frank. How you get out here? It was the dark seeker setting his ass up. Um, nonetheless, it takes a really talented person to not only act on the set primarily by themselves, because Willow Smith was in that film with him, but she was so young, she was a baby, but it was literally just kind of like one scene. He had a wife, he had a family, he had a kid, and he sent him away on the helicopter, the helicopter crashed, then it was just him in society all by himself. All by himself. And he acted throughout that whole film by himself. And that takes a lot of talent to do. A lot of talent to do. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, that was a good point. My favorite part was when that girl cooked that bacon. Yes, when he finally figured out that there was somebody else in society that was living. And she cooked that meal. And she was like, he was like, she, she cooked a meal. She cooked eggs and bacon. And he was like, I was saving that bacon. I was, and he got so mad because he had that bacon in the freezer and he was saving it because I mean, like he's the last one on earth. Like it's not nowhere else he can get no bacon from. She had cooked the last of his bacon chow. Anyway, Michael B. Jordan, don't nobody want to see that. Don't nobody want to see Michael. So they're making a sequel. Apparently it's supposed to be two or three decades out. And I'm, I'm, I'm like not sure how to feel about it. Okay, the screenwriter behind Will Smith 
and Michael B. Jordan's upcoming sequel to 2007's I Am Legend is taking some cues from the popular HBO series, The Last of Us. Now, I hadn't seen The Last of Us, but okay. Now, the apparently the film is supposed to take place a few decades later than the first, though he didn't clarify um, Michael B. Jordan's role in the story. And, you know, the thing about it is apparently they're going to be utilizing the alternative ending. Now, I do have it on DVD. I did watch the alternative ending. I won't ruin it all. Oh, damn it. I want to discuss the ending. You know what? In order for me to not ruin the alternative ending, I might as well not even tell y'all the regular regular ending for the people who haven't seen it. But um, it's a really good film. I recommend you watching it. Um, he had to kill his own goddamn dog because his dog had got infected by this like deadly plague that turned any living thing into a zombie. Crazy film, crazy film, crazy film. But I just don't know how I feel about Michael B. Jordan. I'm, I just, I don't know. I feel like he doesn't have range. I feel like Michael doesn't really like have range. Um, that's just me though. Not his dog got Corona. Um, I just, I just don't feel like he has the range. But um, mm. I'm going to watch it. And baby, when I tell you I'm going to wear it out, if it's trash, I'm assuming it's going to be trash. Oh, I'm going to wear it out. All right. There we go. Speaking of which, can y'all put a two in the chat? Where my index cards go? Can y'all put a two in the chat if you've seen the movie Orphan? Real quick, real quick. Sometimes I like to talk about movies and what's on screen. I basically need to make a segment of the show where we talk about films. and. Can y'all put a two in the chat if you've seen Orphan? That movie Orphan with that crazy little girl? I'm seeing some twos. I'm seeing some twos. I'm seeing some twos. I got something to tell y'all about that because I'm not sure if all of y'all knew. I got something. I need to tell y'all about this real quick. Oh, I see a good amount of twos. Okay. Um, let me show y'all the poster art just in case you don't remember the name. Sometimes you don't remember the name of movies you've seen. This is what the movie cover looks like. Oh, shit. I will have y'all know they came out with a part two. I watched it last night on Amazon Prime. It's called, what is it called? Orphan the First Kill. You got to see it. You got to see it. I won't ruin anything for anybody that hasn't seen it. Can somebody put a three in the chat if they've seen part two? It's literally called like Orphan First Kill. They said something was wrong with her. You watched it last night too? Why are we living the same life? Why are we living the same life? Because I literally watched it last night. Yeah, it's called Orphan First Kill. That's crazy that somebody else watched it last night. Really good film. Does Esther return? Yes, she does. Which at first had me like, stop playing with me. But it was good. Surprisingly, it, it you got to stick with it. In the first 20 minutes, you might feel like, come on with this now. This is the same thing that, stick with it, I'm telling you. Okay. Anyway, that was our, I guess, a new series that's been born, Child Screen Talk. We talking about things that be on the screen, whether they're movies that we go see in the movies or in general. Watch the second installment of the Orphan series. It was really good. It was really good. Not to mention we still need, yeah, it was definitely a what the fuck. Not to mention we still need to talk about the read and backstage. Okay. Now, all right, we got into I Am Legend. Now we need to get into the Bernie Mac show 
curse. A lot of people feel like Bernie Mac is rolling over in his grave. Um, let me explain the situation and then I'll let you all decide. The following video is broadcasting live and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. So, you know, what's really happening? A lot of you all might understand or know already that Nessa, Nessa, Nessa is on OnlyFans, but did you know that Baby Girl is also on OnlyFans too? Do y'all feel like Bernie Mac would be upset by this? Now, Dee Dee Davis is Baby Girl. You can see this first arrow I have up top. That's Dee Dee Davis. And then Nessa is this beautiful brown skin um, young woman that we see down at the bottom. They're both on OnlyFans. How do you all feel about this? I really want to know how y'all feel. I really want to know. And so I call it a curse just loosely because it seems like all of the, you know, Bernie Mac's children of the show, like on the, you know, like the set of the show, they all on OnlyFans. Only thing left is for Jordan. You know, you see this beautiful young boy to, or should I say handsome young man to the right on OnlyFans. They said Nessa be singing with her tatas out. Ciao. Let me let me pull up this supporting documentation in case y'all don't believe me. Let me pull up the supporting documentation. All right. Y'all got to know it's real. Some people think Bernie Mac will be rolling over in his grave. All right. Dee Dee Davis is baby girl. And you can even see, you know what I mean? You can see she, she, you know, she does interviews and you can see Bernie Mac, you know, was holding her way back when Bernie Mac on the screen, we click on here. Now, why is it popping up like that? Hold up. Uh-uh, wait a minute. Let me refresh. Child, why would it pop up like that? Why would Instagram, y'all see the... Let's go to the bush for this technical difficulty. Cause what's Instagram got going on? What the hell? It was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really? I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. Maybe I got to make the screen bigger. Oh, okay. That's what it was. They don't like the small screen. Okay. I was zoomed in. The thing is, I have to have my screen a certain size in order for my... It, it's, a, it's a formatting issue, but I have to have my screen kind of somewhat teeny in order to make like my thumbnails and stuff pop up. But anyway, here we go. You can see this is Dee Dee Davis. She says, only fans link in bio, okay? Now, she turned the comments off because people was doing too much. Let me like it and support y'all because, baby, the more people try to shame you out of things, the more it's going to push you in. Do you accept this rose from me? Link in bio. This is baby girl. Nessa, baby girl. Only fans link in bio. You can see her bio up here. And she's on OnlyFans. And so um, her and Nessa are still cool. Nessa comments on her um, on her posts. Nessa had posted a joke. Baby, what the hell in the Halloween is going on? What? What was that? Excuse me? Goodbye. 
Because this is what nightmares are made of. All right, goodbye. J baby girl be out here partying real bad. This is giving, it's Halloween. Hey, <laughs> she was at a thriller party. Not him stabbing himself. What? Baby, okay. So baby girl is into some freaky shit and not necessarily in a sexual type way. Um, it seems like it's just freaky all around, you know what I mean? And um, apparently when you go to her OnlyFans, it says no nudity. Oh, it, oh, oh y'all, let's read this together. I know you lying. Dee Dee Davis. I'm a big girl now. Girl, not I'm a big girl now. What the hell? Legal disclaimer, all rights reserved. Unless otherwise expressly stated, I agree. Represent, warrant, plow, the term. Girl, I thought it was going to say something else. Not a whole, not I'm a big girl now. $12.99 a month. Just for you. Baby. Is Bernie Mac rolling over in his grave? Yes or no? Put a five in the chat if Bernie Mac is rolling over in his grave. Put a six in the chat if you think that Bernie would support them for who they are and support their identities and their adult choices. Child. This is a lot. What's really going on? Baby, baby girl. What is going on? America? America. Shit. Woo! This is a lot. Wait, is this Nessa? Somebody just sent me. Uh-uh, not, not one of my followers subscribed to Nessa and they done bought the pictures and just sent them to me. Lord have mercy. Woo! -hoo! Well, I got a sticky that's done sent me the pictures of Nessa. And I mean, like, it's not full nudity, but... It's showing everything but the nipple and the coochie. Wow. Ain't that something? Damn. Well, all right. I mean, let me see what numbers are in the chat. Five for if Bernie is rolling over in his grave. Six if you think Bernie would support them um, and their adult identities and choices and things like that. Let me see what numbers we got. Ciao. I'm seeing a lot of fives. Okay, I see a six. I see more fives than anything. Oh my goodness gracious. They say, can you tag me? I'll, I'll put it in the Discord. Um... Baby, if 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 Jordan join OnlyFans, baby, it's gonna be over. It's gonna be over. I see a couple of sixes. America, baby, do you have your passport? Yes. Mm. Different, 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 different type of situation. Do you think Bernie Mac would be upset? Do you think that he would disown them or support them in their adult decisions? 
I pass the question off to you, Stickies. Let me know down below in the comments whether you're on the bus right now or whether you're chasing the bus. And if you're chasing the bus, that just means that you weren't here live on the bus. It means that you caught it afterwards, okay? Now we need to move on to Rihanna. A couple more topics, and then we finna, um, we finna get out of here. Got a couple different screens up. Um... I think I need to restart this computer. I'm going to get me a Mac Mini, and I'm really excited about that. I this Mac Mini is about to take me to another level that I'm about to get. And I don't even know which Mac Mini I'm about to get. Um, I just know they just came out with a new line of things. But um, I already got my white keyboard set up. I got a lot set up. And shout out to the people in the Discord because my Rihanna, after the Rihanna uh, halftime show, and she reminded us that Fenty Beauty was a thing. I was like, Rihanna, shut up and take my money. Shut up and take my money. Take my money right now. And I told her to shut up and took my money. And she did take my money. And um, I ordered some makeup. <laughs> I ordered, <laughs> I ordered some Rihanna makeup. We were talking in the Discord. They were telling me that the blotting powder doesn't make them look casket sharp. It doesn't make them look crazy. So I got a couple of lip things. I got the blotting powder. And I got the fat toner and the face facial cleanser. Because it was like this set that was like on sale. But yeah, my little Rihanna package came today. And so... I got my Rihanna lip gloss on today, even though it's kind of dried out because this is the second video. We're literally like, what, three hours and 15 minutes into me talk, three hours and 20 minutes into me talking with uh, about the Rihanna thing. So, but I posted my Rihanna drawer because I have a whole Rihanna drawer. So I'm going to reapply my lip gloss and then we're going to get into the Rihanna topic that we need to be disgusting shut up and take my money i don't care Rihanna. shut up and take my money no i do know that she she has good uh good mac and, and it really is a competitor for mac it's difficult to compete with mac but um This video was, wish I want to be, sponsored by Fenty. Baby, if Fenty was sponsoring me, I'd be in a whole nother place. I wish this video was sponsored by Fenty, but baby, I'm just going to talk about it. Okay. I got a whole Rihanna drawer with all my little lip products and stuff. Anyway, y'all don't care because I'm not a makeup channel anymore. I'm a commentary channel. We're going to move on to the next subject. So Rihanna... Ah, this is pretty easy for me to talk about. Rihanna's calling her son fine. And some of y'all are upset about it. Not y'all as in my, my stickies with common sense. But some people that are trying to make something out of nothing. She called her son fine. And Rihanna is back at, at, at is back to clapping at you folks on the internet who think that y'all can say whatever y'all want to say to or about Rihanna. And see, Rihanna back in the day, she used to clap back at a lot of people. She stopped at some point, but now she's back at it. Hold on. I see a makeup question and I missed. Are they good quality other than size small? This is a whole nother level that's not Victoria's Secret. It is a really good quality. I will say that it literally reminds me of the MAC quality. It MAC, I used to get tired of buying MAC. Sometimes I still get tired of buying MAC because I just feel like MAC is an older brand, but it's a brand that I can trust. They have the quality, the color payoff, the pigmentation, all that. It's worth it. 
That's what I can say. Like it's and, and I'm not just saying it because I'm not being sponsored by shit. There's no incentive for me to tell you that Rihanna, her makeup brand is great, right? Because I started out with two lip products two years ago, and now I have a whole drawer dedicated to her products. Like, I'm not, you know, now, mind you, I can only speak on the makeup. I did just order some skincare that came in the mail today, so I can't speak to the skincare because I haven't been able to try it and test it out yet. But when it comes to the makeup and especially the lip products, it's hidden. And it's definitely giving you something that Matt could give you, if not an ounce better. So that's what I'll say. Um, yeah, we saw the Vogue cover. So her calling her son fine is something that I feel like people are looking too deep into. Rihanna calling her son fine is something that you all want to search. Y'all want to search and y'all want to find, y'all want to search and y'all want to find pedophilia and really when it comes to your typical faves that are in the public eye you don't have to do that so her call or her son fine y'all want to sexualize that for some odd reason that's strange what i call my son fine no but Y'all acting like, oh, she calling her son fine. She one of them. She probably be touching the kid. It's strange. Everybody's definition of fine. I think Rihanna's what, what is she, Caribbean? Or something like that. And it's, it's, it's odd. Y'all trying to find ways to incriminate celebrities who really haven't done anything to sexualize children. Y'all trying to read in between the lines and connect dots that really don't even exist. And make them out to be predators when you don't have any proof. Because you're using something that is not even a loose metaphor. It's a loose assumption based off of an interpretation of a word that doesn't mean the same in every, every you know, like country or or culture or religion there are so if y'all y'all are y'all are trying to pin rihanna to the cross and so well, well, you calling it some fine it's giving peter meanwhile little duval here he is out here saying justin bieber will you great my child and y'all ain't got shit to say about that but here go rihanna my son's so fine Here go R. Kelly. Here go Harvey Weinstein. Here go every, everybody else, present day. And y'all skip past like the shit that's sitting right in your face off you to say, your son is what? Fine? Uh? You're terrible. You probably be touching that. Get right there. She one of them in the industry touching the churn. It's strange to me, not only how selective you can be, but y'all turn cryptic messaging into no different than the people that take the Illuminati shit. Tokyo Tony, Black China would try to sacrifice me. Baby, some people not even worth the sacrifice. Why the fuck would Black China try to sacrifice you, Tokyo Tony? Speaking of which... There's so many overt examples of inappropriate behavior and um, and statements and things that people are saying about other kids or even their own. But you know, in 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 in, in the next episode of what the hell is wrong with y'all? We're gonna talk about Tokyo Tony because some some of y'all hear one keyword and it just activates y'all, puts a battery in your Illuminati. It's real. People sacrifice their parent. 
y'all really y'all really think Tokyo Tony is somebody that the black child can say, you know what, take my mother and I'm gonna make it. What is sacrifices Tokyo Tony gonna do? I wanna know. Y'all hear Illuminati, everything is pedophilic and, 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 and Illuminati there. Now, while there's a lot of that going on, yeah, I will agree. I will agree. It's a good amount of it happening there. Somebody said, who was Tokyo Tony? That's Black China's mother. This is... <laughs> Like I said, prepare yourselves on today's episode of what the hell is wrong with y'all? We have Tokyo Tony. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Hold on, let me make it full screen. Oh, wait, hold on. This is Black China's mother who keep trying to reach out to her. And I got it muted because it's copyrighted music playing, but she's rubbing lotion all over herself, right? So I, I do want y'all to hear one thing and I hope they don't get me for this. All right, here we go. Hold on. Tell your man, look, bitch. <laughs> man, look, bitch. On my page, do you? She said, y'all want to be on my page, do you? Tell your man to look. All right, I can't play no more of that music. What's going on? Oh, you know what? I never thought about PCP. I kept thinking about crack. Look at him. What's really going on? Tell me. What's going on? You see what I'm saying? This is Jaguar Wright's best friend right here. Jaguar Wright's best friend. Jaguar Wright, the same woman that, well, baby, what, not the in the butt crack. What? Jaguar Wright, the same woman that's supposed to be mentoring R. Kelly and Aaliyah's alleged, what, love child, as the girls say it. I mean, again, on today's episode of What the Hell is Wrong with Y'all? Rubbing that lotion all over the place. Tell your man, look, bitch. Well, okay. All righty then. We got it. Uh, we don't ever have to wonder about why Black China don't call your ass back no more. See, because she be online and then the blogs pick it up. Black China don't answer the phone for me. And she, look, look at you. <laughs> Girl, I just... I... Yes, and she's a grandmother. She's not only a mother, she's a grandmother. Um, so yeah, you guys. When they say crack is whack, they absolutely um they mean it. Okay. They mean it. All right. They said that lotion looks stank. Look, uh, 
Some people said it's Jergen's Cherry Blossom Lotion. Other people said it's generic Jergen's. I don't know what brand of lotion. The brand of lotion really don't matter to me. Okay. Leo, what you crying about? But nonetheless, um, this is bananas, is it not? What, if, if this was your mom and you was halfway as famous as Black China, would you be? Girl, I, well, let me see. Hold on. I know I got some Andrew Caldwell to handle this shit right here. I need to stop. Y'all need to grow up. Grow up. I'm tired of telling y'all to grow up. Y'all need to stop it. I'm tired of it, y'all. You ain't finna work me out. Nonetheless, baby. Like I said, that was part two of today's episode of What the Hell is Wrong with Y'all? A series that I know I'm always going to be able to continue over on this show, this channel. Oh, that's so that's that's a different level of embarrassment. I feel like if my mother ever made it to the internet, it would totally be embarrassing, but never to this extent. Just based off of her lack of understanding of like what be going on in today's day and age. Um, as, nonetheless. I ran across this post and I want to show you all this, okay? Now, did you all know that in 1998, Blade earned $131 million, saving Marvel from bankruptcy and essentially paving the way for the franchise that we know today? I mean, like the power that we have with the characters when we really like get into it. One person that really gets into character all the time, Denzel Washington. And he talks about how, his, you know, his wife sometimes has an issue with how he'll, he won't come home as Denzel. He'll come home as the man from Man on Fire or John Q or what the movie with the train, Unstoppable. Um because he engages in, I think they call it method acting or role acting or something. But when we get into our characters, baby, we get there and we deliver $131 million. And what's really interesting about that is they were literally about to file for bankruptcy if Blade didn't save it. Now they have recasted Blade and I do believe there is, there is a sequel on the way as a matter of fact. But... Um, I could show y'all that if I had the time to pull it up. But, you know, um, Wesley Snipes actually went through a uh, a tax crisis. He got in trouble for his taxes a while ago. And they kind of like, like left him high and dry. But he definitely saved Marvel, which is not a Black-owned business. Uh, from going into bankruptcy. And a lot of people don't know that. And so I do feel like it's a part of Black history. I do. Um, and I think Blake, did, did you all see Blade? Shout out to all the people in the chat. Put a seven in the chat if you've seen Blade, if you know what it is all about. Let me know. Let me know. I'm going to show you all right now um, who he was recasted as really quickly. Which I feel like wasn't bad. All right. And this is a guy that I feel like he looks like future. Um, ooh. Mehara Shayla. Mehara Shayla. Uh, but nonetheless, I've seen this actor a few times before, and I, I 
I can't remember what film. Comment down below if you remember what films you've seen him in. I've seen him several times. And I feel like he looked like future brother or something like that. But I feel like it's not far off from what Blade looks like. I wish, I wish Wesley Snipes was able to make a some sort of like cameo. Um, you know, in the film. I don't know. As a father, maybe. I feel like that would be dope. But uh yeah, we 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 saved Marvel. Do he not look like future? Yeah, he definitely he look he be looking like future to me. Um is this is this snowfall that he's in? I can't remember. No, I think in Snowfall, I'm thinking about Damson. Uh, Lori Harvey's new boyfriend. I think I'm thinking about him. Can't remember where I've seen him, but I've seen him quite frequently. I've seen him quite frequently. Somebody said the Green Book. Okay. I haven't seen the Green Book, though. So there's, there's, there's got to be something else he played in that I've that I've seen and I've recognized him. Okay. Okay. I said, we're going to call him Marshall. Okay, James Weeping Bush back in the building. James Weeping Bush, I ain't seen you in a minute. Shout out to you. We're going to go to the bush just off GP because we missed you. I'm like, where is my Weeping Bush? Who does that? <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, um, so I, I, I don't want to focus off that bad energy. I don't want to focus off those people who I care nothing about. Um, but as I was saying, you guys. Let's see, I was supposed to go to the bush, but instead I clicked on Andrew, but Andrew was always going to get us together, okay? Lord have mercy. Um, so yeah, I mean it's 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 really interesting how much we are able to drive. And shout out to anybody who's seen Ant Man. I heard it wasn't a bad film. I heard it wasn't a bad film. That's all I have to say. I don't know as much about it to keep going. Um, let me see what else are y'all saying. Um, let's see what else is going on. So we need to somebody said they really like Moonlight. Okay. Let's see, what our next thing. Let's get in before we get into a little black history. I want to um, one of the things that I enjoy most from the Marvel films are Batman, Avengers. Um, I enjoy the Jessica Jones series, Luke Cage, even though I enjoy Jessica Jones more than Luke Cage. Um, I really love Jessica Jones. Um... That's that's really all I can remember that I really like enjoy and bang with pertaining to Marvel. Mm, yeah, I can't remember anybody else. Um, but nonetheless, it, let me know what you they said. Batman is Batman's not no. Okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Somebody said Batman's not Marvel. Batman the CC. Well, I enjoy it. Um, Batman is DC. So the Gotham series, did anybody see the Gotham series that was like on Netflix? That was DC too. And see, that's how you know I'm not really like child. I'll be... Is 
It's fine if, if I'm wrong. I don't care because I feel like it's a guy thing that I'm getting into. And so, like, it is what it is. But. I'm mixing them up. Okay. Yeah, I'm not into the flash. All right, so I'm getting them mixed up. Okay, so Batman and Bane. The Gotham series was really good. I fell in love with that. But I felt like... I felt like some of the characters within the Batman... Yeah, I'm probably obviously getting things mixed up. Because some of the characters that came in within Batman, I felt like were like Marvel things. That's what I thought. Anyway, DC Comics versus Marvel Comics. It's always a conversation to be had. I don't know. I always felt like, I always felt like DC was Superman and Marvel was Batman. I'm probably getting them confused, and that's okay. I don't mind being wrong about comic books and stuff like that. Like, that's fine. That's my bad. I enjoy watching them. And you know, when you're watching stuff and you like look over at your partner or your friend, and you're like, "What's going on? Like, what's is that? This you hit me like that? Like, I'm I'm that one. I'd be lost. Like, what's going on? Is this person? Because you'll watch Jessica Jones and you'll see Luke Cage pop up sometimes. You'll watch Luke Cage and you'll watch Jessica Jones pop up sometimes. You'll watch Gotham and, you know, some of them will pop up sometimes. So I don't mind being wrong about a fantasy world. It's a fantasy world. It's not like my reporting on the real world. So that's okay. Um, What I will tell you is, here's what I want to say before I move on. And when I tell you I'm passionate about what I'm talking about, I am passionate about what I'm talking about. The dude that played... Bane on Batman with that mask and yes, not sure. whatever that guy. I don't even know his name, but he's a good ass actor. He played in um. There's this movie called The Brothers. This is where I need to start getting back into my bag on the members only thing. I should probably keep some of this to myself. Uh, he's an amazing. He's an amazing. The guy that played Bane on um, the Batman film. He is an undeniable actor. And there are some Netflix films with him. He played in the film Lawless with Shia LaBeouf. I'm going to bring up his name. He did a really, Tom Hardy? Yes. That's exactly who I'm talking about. Oh my God. Oh my God. His acting is out of this world. When I tell you he played himself and he played his brother in a film One of them was straight. Now, they were both in this, like, mafia gang situation. One of them was straight. One of them was gay. But it was at a time where you couldn't be outwardly gay. But the brothers combined were so violent that he came out as gay because you're not going to bang me in my face because I like dick. It was that movie. Like, he literally, he played both of them brothers. And 
believe it or not, it was based on a true story. It probably should still be on Netflix. I'm going to pull this up for you and then we're going to move on to the next thing. So we can go ahead and end this. What is it called? Legend? I can't remember the name of it, but I remember the film. It was really good. Okay, so take a look at this. So this is him literally playing himself and playing his brother. The guy on the left here, you know, this was a heterosexual guy. The guy on the right here was gay. And um, they even had like different teeth. So he clearly had dentures in when he was like, playing his brother and stuff like that. And, you know, there were extremely violent points in the movie and things like that. And um, it was a really good film, in my opinion. It was based on a true story. Um, they said Tom is short. He's talented as fuck, though. I've seen several movies with him, and he is just so, especially Lawless. Lawless with Shia LaBeouf was shot in a different time. I think it was like the 1800s, I believe, is what it was based off of. But this is also the guy who played, you know, Bane. So, yeah, it was a thing. He's very, and I find it to be difficult because I grew up, look, here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to keep it a buck with y'all. I grew up in the day and age where I watched It Takes Two when I was younger. And I watched It Takes Two and I came to the understanding, which was true, that Mary-Kate and Ashley were two different people, but they were twins. And so It Takes Two was like, damn, these are twins making movies. And so when Lindsay Lohan's The Parent Trap came out and I saw Lindsay Lohan who... I didn't know like what acting Lindsay Lohan playing herself and her sister. I didn't understand that it was, I'm thinking that they were two. Lindsay Lohan was a twin too. Right. And so, but Lindsay Lohan was so good at it that it made, it takes two. They look so similar to me. Like they look damn near the same. And so therefore seeing Films where people and their siblings are like acting together, it it can be really difficult. And I remember seeing there was little to no difference. And it takes two with Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, who are two different people, and Lizzie Lohan playing twins. And I kind of felt like Parent Trap was a better film than It Takes Two because Lizzie Lohan acted her ass off. So Tom Hardy, he definitely did his thing um, in these films. And I don't know, I'm probably just getting into a Netflix um, review or train of thought or tangent that really doesn't like apply to this video. But he's a very good actor, y'all. Like he really is. And I'll just leave it there. If y'all want to watch the film, watch the film. I don't want to ruin it. I was about to say some additional stuff. The film is really amazing. Okay. I assume that Lindsay Lohan had a twin. Yes. <laughs> I totally assume that Lindsay had a twin because she was acting, if not on the same level as Mary Kate and Ashley, but a step above that. So when I see brothers or twins or whoever acting it's like and he they they played that role so well that i just it was it was dope okay so i highly recommend that you all watch that ciao where are we at now baby where are we at now we didn't got derailed we got derailed but it's okay we were talking about what's going on and the world okay this is big facts Jane I thought that I was the only one who thought like that it, it takes two to parent trap yeah they were very young so 
it is what it is. Um, we have one more thing to get into, which is honestly really important, like beyond extremely um, important. And we're going to get into that. Make sure y'all hit thumbs up if you have not already. And we'll be right back with the Black history information. Don't get me wrong. I see there's 178 people here. I know a lot of people are going to click off of this video because they only want mess. They only want drama. They only want to see Black people fighting people. They don't want to see Black history and Black positivity and all of that other stuff. But that's what we are about to talk about. Okay? So hit thumbs up on the video if you haven't already. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. And we will play this commercial that really thanks all of the people who are channel members, who are subscribers, who, who support the show. And we'll be right back. The plane is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I loves me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me? Or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? So wait a minute, you ain't joined the channel yet so that you can access special perks over here with the plainest Jane? Hey, roll us on your wrist of plain Jane. Ooh, watch this. Hey, I'm the plainest Jane. I'm a cultural commentator and informant, and I provide sticky coverage on trending stories, black news, black culture, and everyday topics with a sticky abstract perspective. <laughs> so get familiar with the perks. I've carefully curated all of these things and it's just a little exclusive glaze to amplify the way that you express yourself. <laughs> so get comfortable, get used to our official emoji over here that is the pancake stack because it's always sticky in Hollywood and in real life and especially when you spend the time over here with the plainest Jane. Like I said, I hope you enjoy the exclusive glaze that I've provided for you to amplify the way you express yourself, and I hope you enjoy the digital vibe. Hey, listen, I always want you to keep it sticky, but be sure to think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. But most importantly, I hope that you're feeling all right, and hopefully you've had some time to tackle some of your invisible problems. I know I got a couple of new subscribers, and I just want to say thank y'all. I really do appreciate you. And if you're not quite feeling all right, this channel right here, once you join, it's going to help you kick back and decompress always but it'll also keep you in the know with what's happening with the best black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. So again, get comfortable. The first drink is on me, all right? Act like you got some sense, and I'll see you around. But don't forget to keep it sticky 24-7 by following me on Instagram, but hit that notification bell so that you always know when I upload and you get your dose of syrup first. Now, with all that stickiness being said, the most important thing I want you to remember about this neck of the woods in the plainest Jane is Black Lives Matter. And if you don't agree, buy pumpkin, buy pumpkin. That would take you out. I don't play that shit. Now you gotta go for real. It's just that simple. <laughs> hey, look, whether you join or not, I do want you to stay beautiful, black, and blessed. And just know I appreciate your support. I'm your girl, the plainest Jane. And let's see what's happening in these virtual streets. You ready? Mm. All right now. <laughs> this will be a crazy ride. I'm warning you now. It just trips me out and I I've been trying to play different mind tricks on myself. I don't mind when people drop off my video at any point in time when I see the numbers go down. But when I see the numbers go down and I'm like, I'm about to talk about some black excellence or some black history, it just be making me feel like, damn, like y'all really only... As much as I understand that that's the reality, I can't lie and act like it doesn't still bother me. It's still just, it's wild as hell to me. It's, it's, it's wild as hell. A great amount of people will request positive black coverage. 
I'm tired of seeing the negative black coverage. And I'm one of those people, but I watch positive video. And I watch positive, and I watch black, you know, but it's just like, I'm getting ready to talk about the positive stuff. 30, 40 people drop off like, no, I want to see the positive shit. I want to see the mess. I want to see us fight. And I'm trying to become less affected by that and just serve and deliver the information or the knowledge that I need to. But I can't act like it's not like y'all. Like this is this is why I uploaded a video about Uncle Tom that don't even have a thousand views. Because a great amount of people don't give a fuck. If it's not about Krishan and Blueface and the fighting and the drama, people don't care. And it's It's bothersome because some people will ask for some additional energy from me. I mean, like, I'm going to do it because it sets, it puts my conscience at ease. I put out stuff that wasn't just celebrity back and forth. But also, it's like I'm putting out this energy to have a video that performs like this. And you got to understand, have a vid having a video that performs like that, it, it, it hurts you as a content creator. Not just based on how it looks to other people, but YouTube is like, well, you know, when you upload some videos, they don't even get a thousand views. That means when you upload the next video that might be about mess or about a trending topic, they won't recommend it as much because they're like, well, your last video didn't like shit. So we're not going to show this video. to nobody. So it might stifle me and what I'm trying to do. There's not much incentive for the content creator that wants to create content about Black positivity or Black history. There is little to no incentive about that, especially if it's standalone stuff. I don't know. It is what it is. It, 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 because like if I stop talking about this and I talk about the mess only, everybody's going to be there and people hate that. The, the numbers say something different than what the people are saying in the comments. It is what it is. So, um, let's go ahead and get into what we need to discuss with the Black history and things of that nature. Because some of y'all in the comments got me about to, some of y'all got me about to cry. Um... All right, let's get into this. It's time to face it, boo. Your product needs more exposure. If you want to see your ad here on my channel, be sure to shoot an email over to yt.theplainestjane at gmail.com and let's chat. But if you're new in my neighborhood here on YouTube, hey, I'm the plainest Jane and I provide coverage and commentary on trending stories, viral events, and black culture. I definitely, definitely appreciate you stopping through and hitting that subscribe button if you'd like more of my particular brand of syrup. So here we are. We talk about Uncle Tom. I talked about Uncle Tom. I uploaded a video about Uncle Tom and the terminology and how distorted, honestly, his story has became. Unfortunately, Uncle Tom has become a figure of speech, should we say, to classify and um, identify somebody, categorize, should I say, a Black person who is a tap dancer. Who's a coon? Lo and behold. Um, 
what I want to do, what I feel like, because I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm so bothered by the fact that people don't want to hear about our history. They want to hear more about mess. So I'm really, honestly, I'm in the middle of an emotional like situation. I'm not even gonna hold you. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I know once I play this video, I'll be better able to give you all um, because I did some additional research. <laughs> like I talked about this on February 14th on Valentine's Day and like it just bothers me how niggas just want to see mess and they don't want to understand their history. And I posed this question in my Discord and I was like, imagine if before you sat down to get your hair done or to get your hair cut, your stylist or your barber or whoever required you to name two people who invented some shit, who did something to contribute to the betterment or the liberation of us black people. Imagine if your barber or your stylist required that of you. Because it's like, how do we require our people? We're upset that they don't like that they don't want to teach it in the schools. We're upset that the schools like we don't want to teach this shit. And honestly, it's not even a fight that we should be fighting. Because we shouldn't be trusting the whites to teach our kids about the black history of us. We shouldn't teach them that because revisionist history is definitely a fucking thing. So what is it that we can do to force our people into learning and comprehending most importantly retaining because we can get them to listen <laughs> but baby the real challenge is to get them to retain the history of our ancestors. Imagine if every time you got your hair done or your hair cut, your stylist said, "Name me two black people and what they even what 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 they even it." It might sound like a long shot. I don't know. I'm not a stylist. I'm not a whatever. But imagine if that's what it was. I don't know. I, 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 it might sound like I'm all over the place right now. All I'm saying is, Jesus Christ. All I'm saying is, We've got to find ways to educate. See, it's it's more than a February thing to me. It's Black History Month for everybody else. And everybody, Black History Month. It's a, baby, I do my fucking Black History Month in every fucking video. Don't matter what month it is. Like, it's not that for me. But it's like, how can we get, how can we force feed? And that's what it is. It's force feeding. How can we force feed our people into absorbing and retaining Black history and Black excellence? How? That's a question. And I'm like, shit, we all get our hair done or our hair cut. Imagine if your stylist said, listen, before you, before you sit down in my chair, Name me two, name me three black people. Give me their names of what they invented. It might sound dumb as shit to some of y'all, but I don't know. I'm just trying to brainstorm ways.
I would love a challenge like that. Because you should... Because you should easily be a and, and if you can't, then cool. But in order to get your hair done or your hair cut, you you gonna have to do some research. And you gonna have to look at, at some of your ancestors who did XYZ, who created XYZ, George Washington Carver, the peanut butter, the iron board, the mop, May Jemison. And that should be secondhand knowledge to you. That should be something where you're in the middle of a fucking conversation that you're having with somebody and you should easily, as a black person, and honestly, I think a lot of us, I think a lot of us right now wouldn't be able to have a ca casual conversation and name three black people who invented some shit. If you're not able to argue with a white person and say, well, my people created X, Y, and Z, and, and name it. And name how they tried to get the patent and or name how the patent was stolen from them by X, Y, Z. Do you know who discovered the North Pole? Some people will say it's basic history, but a lot of people don't know it. And I, Nia, thank you for the ten dollar super chat. I don't think that the viewers are uninterested in positive content. It's just that the algorithm suppresses positive videos, so you'll have fewer viewers. Um, you know, I disagree and I do appreciate your super chat and I definitely appreciate your comment and you being a part of this conversation. But I do think that a lot of people like to click on negativity more than they like to click on positivity. Like I could upload two videos at, 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 at 10 o'clock. The negative video is going to get more views, period, because people like to see shit like that. That's the bottom line. And it sucks that I have to even trick people who watch my channel, who view my channel. I have to trick them into like what I call force feed. I have to force feed my channel positive information about the black community or about black history because they won't watch the video in and of itself. So I gotta be like, messy topic or even messy topic, messy topic, black history or positivity. And then messy topic, messy topic, black and so like it I that's how I have to structure shit in order to get people. I have to. If I don't, if I do a video, if I do a standalone video about Tyler Perry, and if my video editor, if you're watching, don't even bother. Don't even bother clipping the video about Tyler Perry because it's not going to do anything. It's not. It's a waste of time. But, you know. It is what it is. Um, let me see. I want you all to understand. I want you all to understand. This is a long weekend. First of all, I'm excited for the long weekend.
take our power back and speak about Uncle Tom and his legacy and what he did as opposed to using this term to outcast and exile people, which don't get me wrong, when we call people Uncle Toms, we know what we're saying. But we need to use a different term because the original Uncle Tom did a lot to liberate us. And while some people may call it boring, it's because all they want to see is Black people fight in drama. And we need to be about more than that. We need to prioritize and get ourselves to realize, I want to sit down and I want to learn and I want to listen to some of the things about us that are positive so that I can regurgitate these things. Hair salon and barbershop talk shouldn't all be gossip. Let's talk about our history in these places. I get it. It sounds corny to some people, but people want to see the change and they're tired of the drama, but they don't want to do anything to contribute to the positive esque of the typical conversations that Black people have on a day-to-day -day basis. Really now let's spend a little bit of time with our ancestors or at least listening to them because you know they always tell us you don't know where you're going unless you know where you came from. So let's get into a little bit of Black history with this. Black History Moment. You in that cross. They got me in the system. Why they gotta do me like that? I know I can be what I wanna be. Be what I wanna be. We got love for y'all. We got love for y'all. go ahead and get right into it. Most people have heard of or used the term Uncle Tom when we refer to a sellout, a quote unquote sellout. But did you know that the reference is actually totally wrong? The real Uncle Tom was a hero. His name was Josiah Henson and he was an abolitionist who helped free slaves. He helped slaves escape among other great things. So Uncle Tom was a man who refused to beat Black women. He refused to tell on other slaves. He would put cotton in other slaves' bags at night so that they wouldn't get beat. He helped a 100 slaves get free long before the Underground Railroad ever even became a thing. Josiah Henson was born into slavery in 1789 in Charles County, Maryland. Whoop, whoop. Shout out to us. But growing up, he watched his father receive beatings for standing up to his slave owner and also witnessed his father's ear being severed as a part of the punishment and also his father being sold off. Upon the death of his owner, Henson, who also separated from his family in an estate sale, he remained on his new owner's farm in Montgomery County, Maryland. Wow, not too far from me at all definitely right here around about Baltimore. And so he was an adult. As he aged, he rose to become a trusted enslaved and supervised other enslaved people on the farm. However, he used his new position to make his escape from slavery. Now, following the Underground Railroad, Henson escaped from Maryland to the province of Upper Canada, Ontario, in Canada with his wife and four children, by way of the Nigeria River in 1830. Now, Henson worked on farms in his first years in Canada to support his family. And in 1834, he founded a Black settlement on rented land. Now, he purchased 200 acres of land in Kent County and founded a settlement and laborers' school for the fugitive slaves. Now, he later became a preacher and a conductor on the Underground Railroad between Tennessee and Ontario, helping the enslaved escape from slavery. He also served as a military officer in the British Army in Canada. So stop calling these sellouts Uncle Tom. That's a compliment. It's Sambo that was the sellout who would do anything for his slave master's approval. Uncle Tom is a man to be respected, not associated with the Sambo dog. 
And so I bet you, you didn't know that. That's that. These are things that a lot of people don't know. And so when we talk about the etymology of a term, etymology is really a term or a word over time and how, how the, the, the definition, the meaning or the usage of it has changed over time. The etymology has changed over time, but it's time that we reclaim ownership of that that phrase, Uncle Tom. We need to let people know, stop. Y'all referring to people as Uncle Toms who are sellouts. It's, a, it's not a little bogus. It's very bogus. Revisionist history is a thing. So we need to take our power back and speak about Uncle Tom and his legacy and what he did as opposed to using this term to outcast and exile people, which don't get me wrong, when we call people Uncle Toms, we know what we're saying, but we need to use a different term because the original Uncle Tom did a lot to liberate us. And so when we talk about the etymology of this term, it's been turned upside down to make us frown upon the original Uncle Tom who stood against everything that the term in 2023 stands for. It's important for us to understand our history. And that's what these Black History Moments are all about here on my show. Stop calling sellouts Uncle Toms because the real Uncle Tom stood for the opposite of everything that that term implies. It's really important that we understand where these terms came from and who decided that they wanted to turn around and demonize his name and the term. I really doubt it would be any black person. It sounds like white supremacist work to me. That's just, that's just, that, th those are just my thoughts, but that's how the word and the term has, 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 has evolved negatively over time. And it speaks against the true history of what uncle Tom was about. If you didn't know, now you know. The plain is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I loves me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me? Or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I was muted. I was muted. Um, shit. Well, I didn't say much. Um, basically what I was saying was, um, <laughs> I still say I'm muted. Lord, I was muted. So, um, basically, you know, pertaining to this situation, like, Uncle Tom's story has been, it's been distorted, right? And to be quite honest, his name wasn't even Uncle Tom. It wasn't. So... I want to give you all this information. Make sure you hit thumbs up if you haven't already. But Uncle Tom wasn't even like, that wasn't his name. His name was Uncle Tom. The character was actually based on Josiah Henson. 
who hailed from Maryland and used the Underground Railroad to gain his freedom. So this is the thing. Like Uncle Tom, Uncle Tom's story has been distorted. Okay. And so a lot of people want to know, like, how. Okay, so how did it how did it become so derogatory? That was a lot of people's question on the last video. Like, okay, like, okay, we say Uncle Tom be saying the wrong thing. How did it become so? This is what this video is going to like. Well, this segment of the video is going to unravel for you all, and it was basically through the on-screen adaptation of said situation. Because again, the real Uncle Tom was Josiah Henson, but jo Josiah Henson didn't stand for any of the tap dancey, I'm gonna do anything to serve my man. Like that's not cool and what they were about. But you know, like Hollywood comes along and they try to pick up certain stories and take a story in a certain direction based off of the benefit of them. Imagine Hollywood mixed with legal white supremacy at that time. It was, a, it was like they combined those two together and that's what basically happened. If that makes sense. At the time you could legally discriminate. <laughs> you can't do that nowadays, but, but, um, you know, the story, it was distorted, right? And um, like I said, jo Josiah Henson actually hailed from Maryland and the Underground Railroad to gain their freedom. And throughout the decades, um, it was like, We go from like hero to sellout. Hero to sellout when we talk about um when we talk about the situation, right? And then throughout the decades, they you know, from spineless, weak, and submissive Uncle Tom to the on-screen adaptation of the film, which was based off of the book. And the book was actually written by a white woman. So we've got all of these different, like this timeline of like how Uncle Tom went from a name that you wanted to be referred to as to you a tap dancer. And the book initially was written by this white woman and she was in like um, an, an, an abolitionist. So this book was an anti-slavery novel. And um, what is her name? Shh. I can't remember her name. Nonetheless, she was displaying um, she was displaying these uh, Uncle Tom as somebody who had profound thoughts and emotions and she caught a lot of flack for just humanizing Uncle Tom, so to speak. Like she caught this, this white woman. And um, because slaves, black people in general at that time, they had never been portrayed before as having as as being humanized as having like thoughts and um actual like ideas that contributed to society and you know like creating conversation and stuff like that so it um you know the book it was a thing but she caught a lot of flack for it being a white woman and portraying Negroes that way. And it turned into an on-screen depiction. And um, everybody had read it. Honestly, the book had become a bestseller. Everybody had read it. Um, if they hadn't already read it, they were about to read it. 
and it was a it was a big talk at the time, especially pertaining to the publishers. Um, that book at that time, like literally, um, when it came to Uncle Tom, like this white woman abolitionist writing this book about quote unquote Uncle Tom, right? She's writing this book and it becomes a bestseller. And the year it was released, it be it was so well sold that they had to keep 17 different printing presses running 24-7 just to keep up with the demand of the book. In the United States alone, alone, <laughs> Uncle Tom's Cabin sold over 300,000 copies. So it went on to be the best-selling novel of the 19th century. So the interesting part about take a sip, hold on. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's time to face it, boo. Your product needs more exposure. If you want to see your ad here on my channel, be sure to shoot an email over to yt.theplainestjane at gmail.com and let's chat. But if you're new in my neighborhood here on YouTube, hey, I'm The Plainest Jane and I provide coverage and commentary on trending stories, viral events, and black culture. I definitely, definitely appreciate you stopping through and hitting that subscribe button if you'd like more of my particular brand of syrup. So, Uncle Tom's Cabin, over 300,000 copies, went on to be regarded as the best-selling novel of the 19th century. So, some of the very first screen depictions of Uncle Tom, he was, oh yeah, that's... <laughs> Child, I'm reading my notes like, what's going on? So, yeah, I was basically talking about um, how they kind of depict um, Child, how they depict him in general. They pick and choose what they want to magnify when it comes to our people in general. Like, <laughs> like just in general. So, I've got a $5 super chat. Make sure you see the videos. Close. Well, thank you all so much. Yeah, because I did see that you had um, sent an email. Okay. But nonetheless... Did you all see the video that I did right before this one? I did a video right before this one. And baby, the updates on R. Kelly, it's got the people in they feelings, for sure. It's got the people in they feelings. There are a lot of things that people need to understand. And then I got another issues under the flag coming as well. So don't forget about that. But nonetheless, baby, I got to go. It's Saturday. I 
need to go eat. There was more that I needed to speak about and speak of, as a matter of fact. Now that I think about it, I got lost in everything I was saying and everything I was doing. And that's because I'm not the same when I'm hungry. So I need to go. I'm going to see y'all in the next video. Make sure you catch the last one if you haven't already. Um, if you are looking for ways to support the show, make sure you hit thumbs up. It's completely free. It doesn't cost any money. It doesn't cost anything. But also, you could, you know, give, give a little sign sign. If you want to send a cash app, um, you can send five, ten, two dollars. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, and you can also share the video, text message, Twitter, your group chat, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. However you support the show, even if you don't spend a dime, baby. All of it is very much appreciated. And I thank you all so much. Y'all have a beautiful and amazing weekend. I will see you in the Discord right after this. <laughs> Sometime tomorrow. Yes, I'm not sure what time. But I'm going right in the Discord after this. So y'all. Meet me in the Discord. I'm a whole absolute hot mess. Meet me in the Discord and I'm going to catch y'all later. Bye. Deuces. But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen, or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.